Section 1. The Sailor's Word Book N to R by Admiral W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases. N A to N E G. Nab, the bolt, toe, or cock of a gun lock. Nab, a cant term for the head, also a protuberance on the rocky summit of a hill, a rocky ledge below water. Naka, or nacelle, a French boat without mast or sail, used as early as the twelfth century. Knacker, the mother of pearl which lines some shelves, both univalve and bivalve. Nakta, a small transport vessel of early times. Nadir, the lower pole of the rational horizon, the other being the zenith. Naid, a northern term for a lamprey or large eel. To nail is colloquially used for binding a person to a bargain. In weighing articles of food, a nail is eight pounds. Nailing a gun, synonymous with cloying or spiking, when necessary to abandon cannon or when the enemy's artillery, though seized, cannot be taken away, it is proper to spike it, which is done by driving a steel or other spike into the vent. The best method sometimes to render a gun serviceable again is to drill a new vent. See spiking. Nails of sorts. Nails used in carpentry under the denominations of four, six, eight, ten, twenty-four, thirty, and forty penny nails, all of different lengths. Nake, the old word, to unsheath swords or make them naked. Naked. State of a ship's bottom without sheathing. Also a place without means of defense. Nakada or Nokoda, an Arab sea captain. Name, the name of a merchant ship as well as the port to which she belongs must be painted in a conspicuous manner on her stern. If changed, she must be registered de novo, and the old certificate cancelled. Name board, the arch board or part whereon the ship's name and port are painted. Name book, the Anglo-Saxon nom book, a mustering list. Nancy, an East Country term for small lobster. Nancy Dawson, a popular air by which seamen were summoned to grog. Nankin, a light fawn-coloured or white cotton cloth, almost exclusively worn at one time in our ships on the India station. It was supplied from China, but is now manufactured in England, Malta, and the United States. Nant, a brook or small river on the coasts of Wales. Naphtha, a very inflammable, fiercely burning fluid, which oozes from the ground or rock in many different localities, and may be obtained by the distillation of coal, canal, and other substances. It is nearly related to petroleum, which see, and is used for lighting, combustible, and various other purposes. Napier's Bones Small rods arranged by Lord Napier to expedite arithmetical calculations. In Hubridas, quote, a moon dial with Napier's bones and several constellations stones. End quote. Nark, a ray of very wonderful electric powers. Narrowing of the floor sweep. For this peculiar curve, see half breadth of the rising. Narrows, the most confined part of a channel between two lands or any contracted part of a navigable river. Narwhal. The Monodon monoceros, an animal of the cetacean order found in the Arctic seas and distinguished by the single long pointed tusk projecting straight forward from its upper jaw, whence it is also termed sea unicorn. Natural fortification, those obstacles in the form or nature of the country which impede the approaches of an enemy. Natural motion a term applied to the descending parabolic curve of a shot or shell in falling, to naufragiate, an old expression meaning to suffer shipwreck. It occurs in Lithgow's Pilgrim's Farewell, 1618. Knowledge, 
of freight or fare. Naumachia, an artificial piece of water whereon the ancient Romans represented a sea fight, supposed to have originated in the First Punic War. Noropometer, an instrument for measuring the amount of a ship's heel or inclination at sea. Noscopy, the tact of discovering ships or land at considerable distances. Nautical, relating to navigation, sailors, or maritime affairs in general. Nautical Almanac, a book of the first necessity to navigators. See Ephemeris. Nautical Assessors, persons of nautical experience appointed to assist the judge of the admiralty and other courts in technical difficulties. Nautical Astronomy, that part of the celestial science which treats of the planets and stars so far as relates to the purposes of navigation. Nautical Day. This day commences at noon, twelve hours before the civil day, and ends at noon of the following day. See Day. Nautical Mile. Mean. 6,075.6 feet. Nautical Stars. About 72 of the brightest which have been selected for determining the latitude or the longitude by lunar distances and inserted, corrected to the year, in the nautical ephemeris. Nautical tables, those especially computed for resolution of matters dependent on nautical astronomy and navigation generally. Nauticum venus, marine usury, bottomry. Nautilus, the pearly nautilus, Nautilus pompilius, is a marine animal belonging to the same class, cephalopoda, as the cuttlefish, but protected by a beautiful chambered discoid shell. The paper nautilus, Argonauta argo, belongs to a different family of the same class and has a simple, delicate, boat-like shell. Naval, of or belonging to a ship, or as now commonly adopted, to the Royal Navy. Hence, naval stores, naval officers, etc. Naval architecture, the construction or art and science of building ships. Naval armament, a fleet or squadron of ships of war fitted out for a particular service. Naval cadet, see cadet. Naval hospitals, Greenwich is styled by eminence the Royal Hospital, yet the naval medical establishments in England and the colonies are all royal. At home they are Haslar, Plymouth, Yarmouth, Howell-Boline, Chatham, and Woolwich. Abroad, Malta, Jamaica, Halifax, Bermuda, Cape of Good Hope, and Hong Kong. Besides these useful hospitals, there are other stations of relief around the coasts. Naval officer, one belonging to the Royal Navy, also the person in charge of the stores in a royal dockyard abroad. Naval reserve a body of volunteers consisting of coasters and able merchant seamen, who are drilled for serving on board our ships of war in case of need. They receive a fixed rate of compensation, become entitled to a pension, and enjoy other privileges. They are largely officered from their own body. Naval science, a knowledge of the theory of shipbuilding, seamanship, navigation, nautical astronomy, and tactics. Naval stores, all those particulars which are made use of not only in the Royal Navy, but in every other kind of navigation. There are various statutes against stealing or embezzling them. Naval Storeship, a government vessel appropriated to carrying stores and munitions of war to different stations. Naval Tactics, the warlike evolutions of fleets, including such maneuvers as may be judged most suitable for attack, defense, or retreat, with precision. The science of tactics happens never to have proceeded from naval men. Thus, Père La Oste among the French and a lawyer among the English are the prime authorities. Moreover, it is a fact well known to those who served half a century back when Lord Keith, Sir P. Dunham, Sir P. Malcolm, and B. Hallowell practiced their squadrons that questions remained in dispute and undecided for at least sixteen years. Knave Hole the hole in the centre of a gun truck for receiving the end of the axle tree. Naval hoods, those hoods wrought above and below the hawse holes outside a ship where there are no cheeks to support a bolster. Naval laver, a seaweed, ulva umbilicus. Naval line, 
Nazi line. Navigable. Any channel capable of being passed by ships or boats. Navigant. An old word for sailor. Navigation. The art of conducting vessels on the sea, not only by the peculiar knowledge of seamanship in all its intricate details, but also by such a knowledge of the higher branches of nautical astronomy as enables the commander to hit his port, after a long succession of bad weather and an absence of three or four months from all land, any man without science may navigate the entire canals of Great Britain, but may be unable to pass from Plymouth to Guernsey. Navigation Acts Various statutes by which the legislature of Great Britain has in a certain degree restricted the intercourse of foreign vessels with her own ports, or those of her dependent possessions, the object being to promote the increase of British shipping. Navigator. A person skilled in the art of navigation. In old times, the ship's artist. Also, one who plies merely on canals. Also, the navvy, who works on embankments, cuttings, etc. Navithalamus, a word in law Latin, signifying a yacht. Navis, the vigorous labourers employed in cutting canals, railroads, or river works in temporary gangs. Navy, any assembly of ships, whether for commerce or war, more particularly the vessels of war which, belonging to the government of any state, constitute its maritime force. The Royal Navy of Great Britain is conducted under the direction of the Lord's Commissioners for executing the office of Lord High Admiral, and by the following principal officers under them. The controller of the Navy, controlling dockyards, building, etc., with his staff, the accountant general, storekeeper general, and controller of victualling, these several lords meet as a board at Somerset House on special days to give the affairs the force of the Board of Admiralty. Navy Agents Selected mercantile houses, about fourteen, who manage the affairs of officers' pay, prizes, etc., for which the law authorizes a certain percentage. They hold powers of attorney to watch the interests of their clients. Navy Bills Bills of removal, transfer, etc., are not negotiable, nor can they be made other use of. Navy Board. The commissioners of the Navy, collectively considered, but long since abolished. Navy Transport. See Transport. Navy Yard. A royal arsenal for the Navy. Nay word. The old term for the watchword. Parole or countersign. Nays. See Ness. Kneeled. See arming. Kneel to, ashore with deep soundings close in. Neeped, the situation of a ship which within a bar harbour is left aground on the spring tides so that she cannot go to sea or be floated off till the return of the next spring tides. Neep tides, a term from the Anglo Saxon, nipflot. They are but medium tides in respect to their opposites, the springs being neither so high, so low, nor so rapid. The phenomenon is owing to the attractions of the sun and moon, then partly counteracting each other. Near and no near. Synonymous terms used as a warning to the helmsman when too near the wind, not to come closer to it, but to keep the weather helm in hand. Neat, see net, as commercial weight. Neb, this word, the Anglo-Saxon neb, Face as well as nose is sometimes used for ness, which see. Also a bird's beak. Nebula, an old term for a cluster of stars looking like a cloudy spot till separated by telescopic power, but the term is also now correctly applied to masses of nebulous matter only. Necessaries, minor articles of clothing or equipment prescribed by regulation but provided by the men out of their own pay. Necessary money, an extra allowance formerly allowed to pursers for the coals, wood, turnery ware, candles, and other necessaries provided by them. Necessity, if a ship be compelled by necessity to change the order of the places to which she is insured, this is not deemed deviation, and the underwriters are still liable. Neck, the elbow or part connecting the blade and socket of a bayonet. Gooseneck at the ends of booms to connect them with the sides or at the yardarm for the studding sail boom iron. 
neck of a gun, the narrow part where the chase meets the swell of the muzzle. Necked. Tree nails are said to be necked where they are cracked, bent, or nipped between the outside skin and the timbers of a vessel, whether from bad driving or severe straining. Necking. A small neat moulding at the foot of the taffrail over the light. Necklace. A ring of wads placed round a gun is sometimes practised for readiness and stowage. Also a strop round a lower mast carrying leading blocks. Also the chain necklace to which the futtock shrouds are secured in some vessels. Neck of land. Dividing two portions of water, or it may be the neck of a peninsula. Neck of the cascable. The part between the swell of the breech of a gun and the button, its narrowest part within the button. Neckor, a Scandinavian sea sprite, whence some derive our old Nick, in preference to St. Nicholas, the modern patron of sailors. Needle, the Anglo Saxon nadel, see also magnetic needle. Needle fish, the shorter pipe fish, stung or sting, signatus acus. Needle gun, wherein the ignition for the cartridge is produced by the penetration of the detonating priming by a steel spike working in the lock. It is the Prussian musket. Needles, used by sailmakers, are seaming, bolt rope, or roping needles, all three-sided and a very fine steel. The needles of the Isle of Wight are the result of cracks in the rocks through which the sea has worn its way, as also at Old Harry. Swanage Bay, as the chalk formation stretches westward, the structure changes in hardness until at Portland we meet with Portland stone. In California, many of the needle rocks are of volcanic origin, others again are basaltic columns. Neglect, a charge not exceeding three pounds from the wages of a seaman in the complete book for any part of the ship's stores lost overboard or damaged from his gross carelessness. Negligence. If agent or broker engages to do an act for another, and he either wholly neglects it or does it unskillfully, an action on the case will lie against him. To negotiate. The duty of a diplomatist, a last resource and best argument being now twelve-ton guns. Negro boat. See Almadia. Negro head. Hard rolled tobacco. Negro heads. The brown loaves. Issued to ships in ordinary. End of section one. Read by Sandra. Section two of the Sailor's Word Book. N to R by Admiral W. H. Smythe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A digest of sea terms and phrases. N E L to N Y. Nelly. Diomedea spadicea. A seabird of the family Procellaridae, which follows in the wake of a ship when rounding the Cape of Good Horn. It is very voracious of fat blubber. Neptune. A superior planet, recently discovered. It is the most distant member of the solar system yet known and was revealed by the effect which its attraction had produced upon the movements of Uranus. This was one of the most admirable solutions in modern mathematical science. Neptune, so far as is yet known, has no satellites. Neptunes. Large brass pans used in the Bight of Biafra for obtaining salt. Neptune's goblets. The large cup-shaped sponges found in the eastern seas. Raphaerus patera. Neptune's sheep, waves breaking into foam, called white horses. Ness, Anglo-Saxon, Nace, a projection of land, as Dungeness, Sheerness, etc. It is common in other European languages as the French, Ni, Italian, Naso, Russian, Nos, Norwegian, Nase, etc. Our Dunnos is an example. Nest. See crow's nest. Net. In commerce is the weight of a commodity alone, without the package. Net and cobble. The means by which sasses or floodgates are allowed in fishings on navigable rivers. Netting. 
network of rope or small line for the purpose of securing hammocks, sails, etc. Boarding netting, a stout netting formerly extended fore and aft from the gunwale to a proper height up the rigging. Its use was to prevent an enemy from jumping on board. Splinter netting is stretched from the mainmast aft to the mizzenmast in a horizontal position about twelve feet above the quarter deck. It secures those engaged there from injury by the fall of any objects from the mastheads during an action, quote, and has saved the lives of many men who have fallen from aloft. End quote. Nettles, small line used for seizings and for hammock clues. See nettle. To nettle is to provoke. Neutrals, those who do not, by treaty, owe anything to either party in war, for if they do, they are confederates. They are not to interfere between contending powers, and the right of security justifies a belligerent in enforcing the conditions. They are not allowed to trade from one port of the enemy to another, nor to be habitually employed in his coasting trade. Indeed, the simple conveyance of any article to the opponent of the blockading squadron at once settles the non-admission, or even hovering. Never say die. An expressive phrase meaning do not despair. There is hope yet. Nil desperandum. As Cowper says, quote, Beware of desperate steps. The darkest day, wait till tomorrow, will have passed away. End quote. New Act The going on shore without leave, and which, though thus termed, new, is an old trick. Newcomb, an officer commencing his career. Any stranger or fresh hand newly arrived. Newell, an upright piece of timber to receive the tenon of the rails that lead from the breast hook to the gangway. Newgate Birds The men sent on board ship from prisons but the term has also been immemorially used as applied to some of the dragon's men in the voyage of Sir Thomas Rowe to Surat, 1615. New Moon The moon is said to be new when she's in conjunction with the sun or between that luminary and the earth. News Do you hear the news? A formula used in turning up the relief watch. Nice steerage That which is required in tideways and intricate channels chasing or chased. Nitchet, a coward, a term used in old times for those who refused to join the royal standard. Nightcap, warm grog taken just before turning in. Nightingales, see Spithead Nightingales. Night Order Book, a document of some moment as it contains the captain's behests about change of course, etc., and ought to be legibly written. Nightwalker, a fish of a reddish colour about the size of a haddock, so named by Cook's people from the greatest number being caught in the night, probably red snapper. Night ward, the night watch. Nil, scales of hot iron at the armourer's forge, also the stars of rockets. Nimbus, ragged and hanging clouds resolving into rain. See cumulo cirro stratus. Nine pin block. A block, in that form, mostly used for a fair leader under the cross pieces of the forecastle and quarter-deck bits. To the nines, an expression to denote complete. Nin Jim, a corruption of ginseng, which see. Nip, a short turn in a rope, also a fishing term for a bite. In Arctic parlance, a nip is when two flows in motion crushed by their opposite edges, a vessel unhappily entrapped. Also the parts of a rope at the place bound by the seizing, or caught by jamming. Also nip in the hawse, hence freshen the nip, by veering a few feet of the service into the hawse. Nip cheese, the sailor's name for a purser's steward. Nipper, the armorer's pincers or tongs. Also a hammock with so little bedding as to be unfit for stowing in the nettings. Nippering. Fastening nippers by taking turns crosswise between the parts to jam them, and sometimes with a round turn before each cross. These are called racking turns. Nipper men. Foretop men employed to bind the nippers about the cables and messenger, and to whom the boys return them when they're taken off. Nippers are formed of clean, unchafed yarns, drawn from condemned rope, unlaid. 
the yarns are stretched either over two bolts or cleats and a fair strain brought on each part they are then marled from end to end and used in various ways to bind the messenger to the cable and to form slings for wet spars etc the nipper is passed at the manger board the fore end pressing itself against the cable after passing it round cable and messenger spirally the end is passed twice round the messenger and a foretop man holds the end until it reaches the fore hatchway when a main top man takes it up and at the main hatchway it is taken off a boy carrying it forward readily coiled for further use selvagey nippers are used when from a very great strain the common nippers are not found sufficiently secure selvagees are then put on and held fast by means of tree nails see selvagee and tree nails boy and nipper bert's patent for sounding by this contrivance any amount of line is loosely veered so long as the lead descends the line runs through the nipper attached to a canvas inflated boy the instant it is checked or the lead touches bottom the back strain nips the line and indicates the vertical depth that the lead has descended nipple in shipbuilding another name for knuckle which see also the nipple of a gun or musket lock the perforated projection which receives the percussion cap nisak the shetland name for a small porpoise niter potasse nitras a salt formed by the union of nitric acid with potash the main agent in gunpowder nitty a troublesome noise a squabble noah's ark certain clouds elliptically parted considered a sign of fine weather after rain knob the head therefore applied to a person in a high station of life see knob knock the forward upper end of a sail that sets with the boom also a term used for notch nocturnal nocturlabium an instrument chiefly used at sea to take the altitude or depression of some of the stars about the pole in order to find the latitude and the hour of the night nocturnal arc that part of a circle parallel to the equator which is described by a celestial object between its setting and rising noddy the sterna solida a dark web-footed seabird common about the west indies also a simpleton so used by shakespeare and the two gentlemen of verona nodes those points in the orbit of a planet or comet where it intercepts the ecliptic the ascending node is the point where it passes from the south to the north side of the ecliptic the descending node is the opposite point where the latitude changes from north to south see line of nodes nog a tree nail driven through the heels of the shores to secure them noggin a small cup or spirit measure holding about one quarter of a pint nogging the act of securing the shores by tree nails also warming beer at the galley fire no higher see near no howish qualmy feeling an approaching ailment without being able to describe the symptoms no man's land a space in midships between the after part of the belfry and the fore part of a boat when it is stowed upon the booms as is often done in a deep wasted vessel this space is used to contain any blocks ropes tackles etc which may be necessary on the forecastle and probably derives its name from being neither on the starboard nor port side neither in the waist nor on the forecastle nonagesimal degree the point of the ecliptic which is the greatest altitude above the horizon non-combatants a term applied erroneously to the purser master surgeon etc of a man of war for all men on board may be called on more or less to fight non-commissioned officers in familiar parlance non-coms are the sergeants corporals and others appointed under special regulations by the orders of the commanding officer non-condensing engine a high-pressure steam engine nonius scale or vernier that fixed to the oblong opening near the lower end of the index bar of a sextant or quadrant it divides degrees into minutes and these again into parts of seconds no no the answer to the night hail by which it is known that a midshipman or warrant officer is in the boat hailed non-recoil 
This was effected by securing the breaching while the gun was run out, often practiced in small vessels. Nook, a small indentation of the land, a little cove in the inner parts of bays and harbors. Nook Shotten, a Shakespearean expression for a coast indented with bays, as in Henry V. Bourbon speaks contemptuously of that nook shotten isle of Albion. Noon, midday. Noose, a slip or running knot. Nor, the old word for north, also a canal or channel. Nori's Epitome, a treatise on navigation not to be easily cast aside. Norland, of or belonging to the Northland. Normal level of a barometer. A term reckoned synonymous with par line, which see. Norman, a short wooden bar thrust into one of the holes of the windlass or capstan in a merchantman, whereon to veer a rope or fasten the cable, if there be little strain upon it. Also fixed through the head of the rudder in some ships, to prevent the loss of the rudder. Also a pin placed in the bit crosspiece to confine the cable from falling off. Nori and Tammy Nori, the Scotch name for the puffin. North, from the Anglo-Saxon, Nord. North away yawl, the old term for Norway yawl, which see. Northeast passage. To the Pacific or round the north of Europe has been divided into three parts, thus, one, from Archangel to the river Lena, two, from the Lena round to Kotskoi Ness to Kamchatka, and three, from Kamchatka to Japan. They have been accomplished at various times, but not successively. Northern Diver, the Columbus glacialis, a large diving bird. Northern Glance, the old sea name of the Aurora Borealis, which sea. Northern Lights, see Northern Glance. Northers, those winds so well known to all seamen who have frequented the West Indies, and which are preceded by the appearance of a vast quantity of fine cobwebs or gossamer in the atmosphere, which clings to all parts of a vessel's rigging, thus serving as a warning of an approaching gale. Northers alternate with the seasons in the Gulf of Mexico, the Florida Channel, Jamaica, Cuba, etc. Their cold is intense. North following. For this and north preceding, see Quadrant. North Passage to the Indies. The grand object of our maritime expeditions at a remote period, prosecuted with a boldness, dexterity, and perseverance, which, although since equaled in the same pursuit, have not yet been surpassed. Quote, I will undertake to find the North Passage to the Indies sooner than plough with your proud heifer. Unquote. From Massinger. North Sea. The Jamaica name for the North Swell. Sea ground sea. Northwester. This wind in India usually commences or terminates with a violent gust from that quarter, with loud thunder and vivid lightning. Also gales which blow from the eastern coast of North America in the Atlantic during the autumn and winter. Northwest passage by Hudson's Bay into the Pacific Ocean has been more than once attempted of late years, but hitherto without success. Some greatly doubted the practicability of such an enterprise, but the Northwest Passage, as far as relates to the flow of the sea beneath the ice, was satisfactorily solved by Her Majesty's Service Investigator Sir R. McClure, reaching the western end of Barrow's Straits. The former question, up to Melville Island, which Sir R. McClure reached and left his notice at in 1852, having been already thoroughly established by Sir E. Parry, in 1820. North Wind. This wind in the British seas is dry and cold, and generally ushers in fair weather and clear skies. The barometer rises with the wind at north, and is highest at north-northeast. The air forming this wind comes from colder latitudes, and has therefore lost most of its moisture. Norway Skiff. A particularly light and buoyant boat, which is both swift and safe in the worst weather. Norway Yawl. This, of all small boats, is said to be the best calculated for a high sea. It is often met with at a distance from land, when a stout ship can hardly carry any sail. The parent of the Peter boat. Nose, 
often used to denote the stem of a ship, also a neck of land, nace or ness. Notary, the person legally empowered to attest deeds, protests, or other documents in order to render them binding. Notch, the gaffle of a crossbow. Notch block, see snatch block. Notch sight of a gun, a sight having a V-shaped notch, wherein the eye easily finds the lowest or central point. Nothing off, a term used by the man at the con to the steersman, directing him to keep her close to the wind, or nothing off and very well thus. See, thus. Notions, an American sea term for a cargo in sorts. Thus, a notion vessel on the west coast of America is a perfect bazaar, but one which sold a mixture, logwood, bad claret, and sugar to the priests for sacrament wine had to run for it. Noud term in the north for fishes that are accounted of little value. Noop, a round-headed eminence. News, an old and very general term for intelligent perception, evidently from the Greek. Nost, a landing place or indent into the shore for a boat to be moored in, a term of the Orkney Isles. Nozzle faces, square plates of brass raised upon the cylinder, one round each of the steam ports for the valve plates to slide on. Nozzles. In steamers, the same as steam ports, they are oblong passages from the nozzle faces to the inside of the cylinder. By them the steam enters and returns above and below the piston. Also pumped nozzles. Nubeculae, major and minor, the Magellanic clouds, which see. Nucleus of a comet, the condensed or star-like part of the head. Nadi, a Hindustani word for a river. Nagar, a term in the East Indies for a fort, and also for an alligator. Nulla, a ravine or creek of a stream in India. Number, the number on the ship's books is marked on the clothing of seamen. That on a man's hammock or bag corresponds with his number on the watch and station bill. The ships of the Royal Navy are denoted by flags expressing letters, and when passing or nearing each other, the names are exchanged by signals. Losing the number of the mess is a phrase for dying suddenly, being killed or drowned. Numerary, or Marriott's signals, a useful code used by the mercantile marine by an arrangement of flags from a cipher to units and thence to thousands. See signals. Nun boy, a boy made of staves, somewhat in the form of a double cone, large in the middle and tapering rapidly to the ends, the slinging of which is a good specimen of practical rigging tact. Noravi yawl, a corruption of Norway yawl, which see. Nurse, an able first lieutenant who in former times had charge of a young boy captain of interest, but possessing no knowledge for command. Also a small kind of shark, with a very rough skin, a dogfish. Nut. A small piece of iron, with a female screw cut through the middle of it, for screwing on to the end of a bolt. Notation. An oscillatory motion of the Earth's axis, due chiefly to the action of the moon upon the spheroidal figure of our globe. Nuts of an anchor. Two projections, either raised or welded on the square part of the shank for securing the stock to its place. Nyctalopia, see, moon blink. End of section 2, read by Sandra, near Montreal, 2023. Section 3 of the Sailor's Wordbook, N2R, by Admiral W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases O to O.P. O, the fourth class of rating on Lloyd's books for the comparative excellence of merchant ships, but insured vessels are rarely so low. C. A. O, or Ho an interjection commanding attention or possibly the cessation of any action. Oak, Quercus, 
the valuable monarch of the woods. Hearts of oak are our ships, as the old song says. Oakum, from the Anglo-Saxon, Pecumbe, the state into which old ropes are reduced when they are untwisted and picked to pieces. It is principally used in caulking the seams, for stopping leaks, and for making into twice-laid ropes. Very well known in workhouses. White oakum, that which is formed from untarred ropes. Oakum boy, the caulker's apprentice who attends to bring oakum, pitch, etc. Or, a slender piece of timber used as a lever to propel a boat through the water. The blade is dipped into the water while the other end within board, termed the loom, is small enough to be grasped by the rower. The silver oar is a badge of office, similar to the staff of a peace officer, which on presentation enables a person entrusted with a warrant to serve it on board any ship he may set foot upon. To boat the oars is to cease rowing and lay the oars in the boat. Get your oars to pass. The order to prepare them for rowing or shipping them. To shove in an oar. To intermeddle or give an opinion unasked. Oar propulsion. The earliest motive power for vessels. It may be by the broadside in rowlocks abeam. By sweeps on the quarters fore and aft. Or by sculling with one oar in the notch of the transom amidships. See stern oar. Oars. The order to cease rowing by lifting the oars from the water and poising them on their looms horizontally in their rowlocks. Look to your oars, passing any object or among seaweed. Double-banked oars, which see. Oasis, a fertile spot in the midst of a sandy desert. Oath, a solemn affirmation or denial of anything before a person authorized to administer the same for discovery of truth and right. See Corporal Oath. Hesiod ascribes the invention of oaths to discord. The oath of supremacy and of the Protestant faith was formally taken by an officer before he could hold a commission in the Royal Navy. Oaths, synonymous with the Anglo-Saxon was, when applied to mud. See Ooze. Obey, a word forming the fulcrum of naval discipline. Obi a horrible sorcery practiced among the Negroes in the West Indies, the infliction of which by a threat from the juggler is sufficient to lead the denounced victim to mental disease, despondency, and death. Still the wretched trash gathered together for the Ovi spell is not more ridiculous than the amulets of civilized Europe. Oblate, compressed or flattened. Obligation. A bond containing a penalty, with the condition annexed for payment of money or performance of covenants. Oblimation, the deposit of mud and silt by water. Oblique angled triangle, any other than a right angled triangle. Oblique ascension, an arc between the first point of Aries and that point of the equator which comes to the horizon with a star or other heavenly body. Reckoned according to the order of signs. It is the sum or difference of the right ascension and ascensional difference. Oblique bearings consist in determining the position of a ship by observing with a compass the bearings of two or more objects on the shore, whose places are given on a chart, and drawing lines from those places so as to make angles with their meridians equal to the observed bearings, the intersection of the line gives on the chart the position of the ship. This is sometimes called the method of cross-bearings. Oblique sailing is the reduction of the position of the ship from the various courses made good, oblique to the meridian or parallel of latitude. If a vessel sails north or south, it is simply a distance on the meridian, if east or west on the parallel, and refers to parallel sailing. If oblique, it is solved by middle latitude or mercantile sailing. Oblique step, a movement in marching, in which the men, while advancing, gradually take ground to the right or left. Obliquity of the ecliptic, the angle between the planes of the ecliptic and the equator, or the inclination of the Earth's equator to the plane of her annual path, 
upon which the seasons depend. This amounts at present to about 23 degrees 27 minutes. Oblong square, a name improperly given to a parallelogram, C3 square. Observation. In nautical astronomy, denotes the taking the sun, moon, or star's altitude with a quadrant or sextant, in order thereby to find the latitude or time, also the lunar distances. To observe. To take a bearing or a celestial observation. Obsidional crown. The highest ancient Roman military honor. The decoration of the chief who raised a siege. Obstacles. Chains, booms, abatis, snags, palisades, or anything placed to impede an enemy's progress. Unforeseen hindrances. Obturator. A cover or valve in steam machinery. Obtuse angle. One measuring above 90 degrees and therefore beyond a right angle. Called by shipwrights standing bevelings. Obtuse angle triangle. That which has one obtuse angle. Occident, the West. Occultation, one heavenly body eclipsing another, but in nautical astronomy it is particularly used to denote the eclipses of stars and planets by the moon. To occupy, to take military possession. Ocean, this term in its largest sense is the whole body of salt water which encompasses the globe, except the collection of inland seas, lakes and rivers. In a word, that glorious type of omnipotent power, whether in calm or tempest, quote, dark, heaving, boundless, endless, and sublime, the image of eternity, end quote. In a more limited sense, it is divided into, one, the Atlantic Ocean, two, the Pacific Ocean, three, the Indian Ocean, four, the Southern Ocean. Ocean-going ship in contradistinction to a coaster. Okras, a Gaelic term for the gills of a fish. Octagon, a geometrical figure which has eight equal sides and angles. Otharag, the name of the young cormorant in our northern isles. Oi, an island from the Anglo-Saxon. Oys are violent whirlwinds off the Faroe Islands, said at times to raise the water in siphons. Oferlanders, small vessels on the Rhine and the Meuse. Off, the opposite to near, also applied to a ship sailing from the shore into the open sea, also implies abreast of, or near, as we were off Cape Finisterre. Nothing off, the order to the helmsman not to suffer the ship to fall off from the wind. Offal, slabs, chips, and refuse of timber sold in fathom lots at the dockyards. Off and on, when a ship beating to windward approaches the shore by one board and recedes from it when on the other, also used to denote an undecided person dodging off a port. Off at a tangent, going in a hurry or in a testy humour. Off duty, an officer, marine or seaman in his watch below, etc., an officer is sometimes put off duty as a punishment. Offences, crimes which are not capital, but by the custom of the service come under the Articles of War. Officer, a person having some command, a term applied both in the Royal and Mercantile Navies to any one of a ship's company who ranks above the foremast men. Officer of the day, a military officer, whose immediate duty is to attend to the interior economy of the corps to which he belongs, or of those with which he may be doing duty. Officer of the watch, the lieutenant or other officer who has charge of and commands the watch. Officer's effects, the effects of officers who die on board, are not generally sold, but should they be submitted to auction, the sale is to be confined entirely amongst the officers. Official letters. All official letters which are intended to be laid before the commander-in-chief must be signed by the officers themselves, specifying their rank under their signatures. 
All applications from petty officers, seamen, and marines relative to transfer, discharge, or other subjects of a similar nature are to be made through the captain or commanding officer. They ought to be written on foolscap paper, leaving a margin to the left hand of one-fourth of the breadth, and superscribed on the cover, on H.M. service. Offing implies to seaward, beyond anchoring ground. To keep a good offing is to keep well off the land while under sail. Off-reckoning, a proportion of the full pay of troops retained from them in special cases until the period of final settlement to cover various expected charges for ship rations and the like. Off she goes means run away with the purchase fall. Move to the tune of the fifer. The first move when a vessel is launched. Off the reel. At once, without stopping, in allusion to the way in which the log line flies off the reel when a ship is sailing fast. Offward. The situation of a ship which lies aground and leans from the shore. The ship heels offward, and the ship lies with her stern to the offward, is when her stern is towards the sea. Oji. In old pattern guns, the doubly curved moulding added by way of finish to several of the rings. Ogident. Jack's corruption of aguardiente, Spanish, a fiery and very unwholesome spirit. Oil butt, a name for the black whale. Oilets, or oye, apertures for firing through in the walls of a fort. Oiter, a Gaelic word still in use for a sandbank. Ojanko snapper, a tropical fish of the Mesoprian family frequenting the deep-water banks of the West Indies. Oak, a levant weight of two and three-quarter pounds, common in Mediterranean commerce. Old country, a very general designation for Great Britain among the Americans. The term is never applied to any part of the continent of Europe. Old hand, a knowing and expert person. Old horse, tough salt beef. Old ice, in polar parlance, that of previous seasons. Old stater, one well initiated in anything. Old staterism, an adherence to established customs, see conservatism. Oldsters, in the old days of cockpit tyranny, mids of four years standing, and masters' mates, etc., who sadly bullied the youngsters. Old wife, a fish about two feet long and nine inches high in the back, having a small mouth, a large eye and a broad dorsal fin, and a blue body, also the brown long-tailed duck of pennant. Old woman's tooth, a peculiar chisel for stub mortising. Oleron Code, a celebrated collection of maritime laws compiled and promulgated by Richard Coeur de Lyon at the island of Oleron, near the coast of Poitou, the inhabitants of which have been deemed able mariners ever since. It is reckoned the best code of sea laws in the world, and is recorded in the Black Book of the Admiralty. Ulic, the Torsk, or Tusk, Gados Calarius. Oliver, a West Country term for a young eel. Ulpis, a classic term for one who from a shore eminence watched the course which shoals of fish took, and communicated the result to the fishers. See Condor. Ombre a fish more commonly called grayling or umber. On. The sea is said to be on when boisterous, as there is a high sea on. On a bowlin, close to the wind, when the sail will not stand without hauling the bowlins. Onager, an offensive weapon of the Middle Ages. On a wind, synonymous with on a bowlin. On board, within a ship, the same as aboard. Onchia a gold coin of Sicily, value three ducats, or ten shillings, ten pence sterling. Onsin, an offensive weapon of medieval times, consisting of a staff with a hooked iron head. On deck there, the cry to call attention from aloft or below. One and all, a mutinous sea cry used in the Dutch wars, also a rallying call to put the whole collective force on together. On either tack, any way or every way, a colloquialism. On end, 
the same as an end which see. Top masts and top gallant masts are on end when they are in their places, and sail can be set on them. One o'clock, like one o'clock, with speed, rapidly. Honorarie, ancient ships of burden, with both sails and oars. One, two, three. The song with which the seaman bows out the bounds, the last hall being completed by ballet O. Onion fish. The sepala rubescens, whose body peels into flakes like that vegetable. It is of a pale red colour. On service, on duty, on shore winds, those which blow from the offing and render bays uncomfortable and insecure. On the beam implies any distance from a ship on a line with her beams or at right angles with the keel. On the bow, at any angle on either side of the stem up to forty-five degrees, then it is either four points on the bow or four points before the beam. On the quarter being in that position with regard to a ship, as to be included in the angles which diverge from right astern to four points towards either quarter. Umiak, a light sealskin Greenland boat, generally worked in fine weather by the woman, but in bad weather by the men. Open, the situation of a place which is exposed to the wind and sea, also applied in meteorology to mild weather, also open to attack, not protected also said of any distant visible object open hawes when a vessel rides by two anchors without any cross in her cables open ice fragments of ice sufficiently separate to admit of a ship forcing or boring through them under sail opening trenches the first breaking of ground by besiegers in order to carry on their approaches towards a besieged place open list one of a ship's books which contains the whole of the names of the actual officers and crew, in order to regulate their victualling. The crew are mustered by the open list. To open lower deckers. To fire the lower tier of guns, also said of a person using violent language. Open order. Any distance ordered to be preserved among ships, exceeding a cable's length. Open pack a body of drift ice, the pieces of which, though very near each other, do not generally touch, is opposed to close pack. Open policy, where the amount of the interest of the insured is not fixed by the policy, but is left to be ascertained by the insured in case a loss shall happen. Open roadstead, a place of hazard, as affording no protection either from sea or wind. Operations, Field movements, whether offensive or defensive. Ophiuchus, one of the ancient constellations of which the Lucida is Ras al Agwe, one of the selected nautical objects at Greenwich. This asterism is sometimes called Serpentarius, its Latin name instead of its Greek. Opinion, an experienced witness who never saw the ship yet may legally prove that from the description of her by another witness she was not seaworthy. A possum shrimp, a crustacean so named from its young being carried about in a sort of pouch for some little time after being hatched, the mysis flexuosus of naturalists. A pignoration, the pawning of part of the cargo to get money for the payment of the duty on the remainder. Opposite tax, making contrary boards, also a colloquialism for cross-purposes. Opposition. A celestial body is said to be in opposition to the sun when their longitudes differ 180 degrees or half the circumference of the heavens. Optic. An old term for a magnifying glass. End of section 3. Read by Sandra. Near Montreal, 2023. Section 4 of The Sailor's Word Book, N to R, by Admiral W. H. Smythe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases, O R to O Z. Oratus, an old term for stormy or tempestuous weather. Quote, 
the storm was so outrageous and with rumblings outrageous that I did fear. Orumbi, a sort of state barge used in the Moluccas, some of them are rowed by forty, eighty, or even, it is said, one hundred paddles each. Orarie, ancient coasting vessels. Orb, the circular figure made by a body of troops. Orbit, the path described by a planet or comet round the sun. Orbital, relating to the orbit of a heavenly body. Orc, rack or seaweed used as manure on some of the coasts of England. Orca, a classical name for a large voracious sea animal, probably a grampus, anglicized as orc or orc. Thus, in the second song of Drayton's strange Polyolbion, quote, the ugly orcs that for their lord, the ocean, woo, end quote. And Milton afterwards introduces them, quote, an island salt and bare, the haunt of seals and orcs and sea mews clang, end quote. Order arms, the word of command with muskets or carbines to bring the butt to the ground, the piece vertical against the right side, trigger guard to the front. Open order and close order are terms for keeping the fleet prepared for any particular manoeuvre. Order book, a book kept for the purpose of copying such occasional successive orders as the admiral or senior officer may find it necessary to give. Orderly, the bearer of official messages and appointed to wait upon superior officers with communications. Orderly officer in the army, see officer of the day. Order of battle, the arranging of ships or troops so as to engage the enemy to the best advantage. Order of sailing, see sailing, order of. Orders, societies of knights, see knighthood. Orders in council. Degrees given by the Privy Council, signed by the Sovereign, for important state necessities, independently of any Act of Parliament, but covered by an Act of Indemnity when it is assembled. Ordinary. The establishment of the persons formerly employed to take charge of the ships of war, which are laid up in ordinary at several harbours adjacent to the royal dockyards. These duties are now under the superintendent of the dockyard. Also the state of such men of war and vessels as are out of commission and laid up. Ordinary seamen. The rating for one who can make himself useful on board, even to going aloft, and taking his part on the top sail or top gallant yard, but is not a complete sailor, the latter being termed an able seaman. It would be well if our merchant seamen consisted of apprentices and A.B.s. Ordinary step. The common march of one hundred and ten paces in a minute. Ordnance, a general name for all sorts of great guns which are used in war, also all that relates to the artillery and engineer service. Ordnance hoy, a sloop expressly fitted for transporting ordnance stores to ships and from port to port. Orelet, the earpiece of a helmet. Orembi, a small korokora, which see. Orgs, long pointed beams shod with iron, hanging vertically over a gateway to answer as a portcullis in emergency. Orient, the east point of the compass. Oriflam, the banner of St. Denis, but the term is often applied to the flags of any French commander in chief. Origin, merchant ships claiming benefit for importation must obtain and produce certificates of origin in respect to the goods they claim for, see production. Original entry. The date at which men enter for the navy and repair on board a guard ship or tender where bedding or slops may be supplied to them and are forwarded with them to their proper ships. Orillon. In fortification, a curved projection formed by the face of a bastion overlapping the end of the flank, intended to protect the latter from oblique fire. Modern ricochet fire renders it of little consequence. Orion, one of the ancient constellations of which the Lucida is the well-known nautical star, Betelgeuse. Horizont, the horizon thus spelled by our early navigators. Orlop, the lowest deck, formerly called overlop, consisting of a platform laid over the beams in the hold of ships of war, 
whereon the cables were usually coiled and containing some cabins as well as the chief storerooms in trading vessels it is often a temporary deck orlop beams or hold beams those which support the orlop deck but are chiefly intended to fortify the hold ornaments the carvings of the head stern and quarters of the old ships ornithae an ancient term for the periodical winds by which migratory birds were transported orthodromic the course which lies on a meridian or parallel orthographic projection the profile or representation of a vertical section of a work in fortification ortive amplitude the eastern one oscillating marine engine a steam engine where the top of the piston rod is coupled with the crank and the piston rod moves backward and forward in the direction of the axis of the cylinder while its extremity revolves in a circle with the crank oscillating pump spear a contrivance by which the pumps of a large vessel are worked connected with the crankshaft and flywheel driven by handles in the same way as a winch osmond the old term for pig iron a great article of lading osnaburg in commerce a coarse linen cloth manufactured in scotland but resembling that made at osnaburg in germany osprey the fishhawk pandean haliatus shakespeare in coriolanus says quote, i think he'll be to rome as is the osprey to the fish End quote. os sepier the commercial term for the sepia or cuttlefish bones ostman a corrupted form of hostman otsego bass corrigonus otsego a fish of the american lakes otterpike the lesser weaver trachinus draco also called sea stranger ottomites an old term for turks see shakespeare in othello ounding resembling or imitating waves used by chaucer and others Uster le mer legal term for excuse when a man did not appear in court on summons for that he was then beyond the seas out and outer an old phrase signifying thorough excellence a man up to his duty and able to perform it in style outboard the outside of the ship the reverse of inboard outboats the order to hoist out the boats out earing cleat this is placed on the upper side of the gaff to pass the outer earing round from the cringle outer jib in sloops where the head sails are termed foresail jib and outer jib if set from the foremast head it is now very common for ships to set two standing jibs the stay and tack of the inner one being secured at the middle of the jib boom outer turns and inner turns the outer turns of the earing serve to extend the sail outwards along its yard the inner turns are employed to bind the sail close to the yard outfit the stores with which a merchant vessel is fitted out for any voyage also the providing an individual with clothes etc to outflank by a longer front to overlap the enemy's opposite line and thus gain a chance to turn his flank outhaul or outhauler a rope used for hauling out the tack of a jib lower studding sail or the clue of a boom sail the reverse of in haul outhauling clearing tide ports canals and channels of mud outlandish foreign but means with jack a place where he does not feel at home or a language which he does not understand outlet the effluent or stream by which a lake discharges its water also applied to the spot where the efflux commences outlicker a corruption of outrigger which see outlier a word which has been often used for outrigger but applies to outlying rocks visible above water out oars the order to take to rowing when the sails give but little way on a boat out of commission a ship where officers and men are paid off and pennant hauled down out of trim a ship not properly balanced for fast sailing which may be by a defect in the rigging or in the stowage of the hold out of winding 
set of a plank or piece of timber which has a fair and even surface without any twists, the opposite of winding, out or down, an exclamation of the boatswain, etc., in ordering men out of their hammocks, that is, turn out or your lanyard will be cut. Out pensioners, those entitled to pensions from Greenwich Hospital, but not admitted to the house. Out ports, those commercial harbours which lie on the coasts, all ports in the United Kingdom out of London, see close ports. Outrigans, canals or ditches navigable by boats. Outrigger, a strong beam of which there are several, passed through the ports of a ship and firmly lashed at the gunnel, also assisted by guys from bolts at the waterline, to secure the masts in the act of careening, by counteracting the strain they suffer from the tackles on the opposite side. Also any boom rigged out from a vessel to hang boats by, clear of the ship, when at anchor. Also any spar, as the boomkin for the foretack, or the jigger abaft to haul out the mizzen sheet, or extend the leading blocks of the main braces. Also a small spar used in the tops and cross trees, to thrust out and spread the breast backstays to windward. Also a counterpoising log of wood, rigged out from the side of a narrow boat or canoe to prevent it from being upset. To outsail, to sail faster than another ship, or to make a particular voyage with greater despatch. Outside muster paper, a paper with the outer part blank, but the inner portion ruled and headed, supplied from the dockyards to form the cover of ship's books. Outside planking, such are the whales, the plank shear, the garboard strakes, and the like. Outward. A vessel is said to be entered outwards or inwards according as she is entered at the custom house to depart for or as having arrived from foreign parts. Outward charges. Pilotage and other dues incurred from any port, the reverse of inward charges. Outworks. Works included in the scheme of defence of a place, but outside the main rampart. If detached, they are moreover outside the glacis. Ouvre l'oeil, a mark on French charts over supposed dangers. Over and under turns. Terms applied to the passing of an earring, besides its inner and outer turns. Over anent, opposite to. Over bear. One ship overbears another if she can carry more sail in a fresh wind. Overboard. The state of any person or thing in the sea which had been in a ship. Thrown overboard also means cast adrift by the captain, withdrawal of countenance and support. Overboid, said of a ship when the captain and majority of the quarter-deck officers are very young. Overfall, a rippling or race in the sea where, by the peculiarities of bottom, the water is propelled with immense force, especially when the wind and tide or current set strongly together. See rips. Overgunned, where the weight of metal is disproportioned to the ship and the quarters insufficient for the guns being duly worked. Overhand knot is made by passing the end of a rope over its standing part and through the bite. Overhaul has many applications. A tackle when released is overhauled. To get a fresh purchase, ropes are overhauled. To reach an object or take off strain, weather braces are overhauled. A ship overhauls another in chase when she evidently gains upon her. Also overhauls a stranger and examines her papers. Also is overhauled or examined to determine the refit demanded. Over-insurance. See reinsurance and double insurance. Overlap. A designation of the hatches of a ship. Planks in clinch-built boats. Points of land overlap a harbour's mouth at a particular bearing. To overlap. To fay upon. Overlay days, days for which demurrage can be charged. Overloft, an old term for the upper deck of a ship. Overlooker, generally an old master appointed by owners of ships to look after everything connected with the fitting out of their vessels when in harbour in England. Overmasted, the state of a ship whose masts are too high or too heavy for her weight to counterbalance. To overpress, to carry too much sail on a ship. Over rake, when a ship rides at anchor in a head sea, the waves of which frequently break in upon her, they are said to over rake her. Over rigged, 
a ship with more and heavier gear than necessary so as to be top-hampered, overrisen, when a ship is too high out of the water for her length and breadth so as to make a trouble of lee lurches and weather rolls, such were our eighty-gun three-deckers and forty-fours on two decks, happily now no more, overrunning, see underrun, applied to ice when the young ice overlaps and is driven over, over sea vessels, ships from foreign parts as distinguished from coasters, over setting, the state of a ship turning upside down, either by carrying too much sail or by grounding, so that she falls on one side, see upset, to overshoot, to give a ship too much way, over slough, from the Dutch overslug, meaning the bar of a river or port, also in military parlance, the being passed over in the roster for some recurring duty without being assigned to it, in turn. Overswack, an old word signifying the reflux of the waves by the force of the wind. Overwhelm, a comprehensive word derived from the Anglo-Saxon wilm, a wave, thus the old song, quote, Lashed to the helm should seize o'erwhelm, end quote. Owler, an old term on our southern coast for smuggler, particularly persons who carried wool by night in order to ship it contrary to law, to own, to be a proprietor in a ship. Owners, the proprietors of ships, they are bound to perform contracts made by their masters who are legally their agents. Oxbows, bends or reaches of a river. Ox eye, a small cloud or weather gall, seen on the coast of Africa, which presages a severe storm. It appears at first in the form of an ox eye, but soon overspreads the whole hemisphere, accompanied by a violent wind, which scatters ships in all directions, and many are sunk downright. Also a waterfowl, also the smaller glass bull's eyes. Oxygon, a triangle which has three sharp or acute angles. Oxyrhynchus, a large species of the skate family. Oys, an inlet of the sea among the Shetlands and Orkneys. Oyster bed, a laying of culch, that is, stones, old shells, or other hard substances, so as to form a bed for oysters, which would be choked in soft mud. Oyster catcher, or sea pie, the black and white coast bird, Haematopus australigus. Ozella, a Venetian coin, both in gold and silver, the former being one pound, seventeen shillings, four pence, and the latter one shilling, seven pence, in sterling value. End of section four, read by Sandra, near Montreal, 2023. Section 5. The Sailor's Wordbook, N to R, by Admiral W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases. P. A. Pace. A measure often used for reconnoitering objects. The common pace is two and a half feet, or half the geometrical pace. The pace is also often roughly assumed as a yard. Pacific Ocean, a name given by the Spaniards to the Great Ocean, from the fine weather they experienced on the coast of Peru. Other parts, however, prove this a misnomer. Pack Ice, a large collection of broken flow huddled together, but constantly varying its position said to be open when the fragments do not touch and close when the pieces are in contact. Packing boxes, recesses in the casing of a steamer, directly facing the steam ports, filled with hemp packing and tallow in order to form steam-tight partitions. Packs, heavy thunderclouds. Pad or pad piece, in shipbuilding a piece of timber placed on the top of a beam at its middle part, in order to make up the curve or round of the deck. Paddle, a kind of oar used by the natives of India, Africa, and America, and by most savages. It is shorter and broader in the blade than the common oar. To paddle is to propel a boat more purely by hand, that is, without a fulcrum or rowlock. Paddle beams, 
two large beams projecting over the sides of a steamer between which the paddle wheels revolve. See Sponson. Paddle box. The frame of wood which encircles the upper part of the paddle wheel. Paddle box boats. Boats made to fit the paddle box rim, stowed bottom upwards on each box. Paddle shaft. The stout iron axis carrying the paddle wheels, which revolves with them when keyed. Paddle steamer. A steamship propelled through the water by paddle wheels. Paddle wheels. The wheels on each side of a steamer, suspended externally by a shaft and driven by steam to propel her by the action of the floats. Paddy or paddy. Rice in the husk, so called by the Malays, from whose language the word has found its way to all the coasts of India. Paddy boats. A peculiar salon boat for the conveyance of rice and other necessaries. Paddy's hurricane. Not wind enough to float the pennant. Padrone. See patron or master. This word is not used in larger vessels than coasters. Paduan. A small Malay vessel, armed with two guns, one aft and the other forward, for piratical purposes. Pagoda. Tall, tapering buildings erected by the Chinese and other Eastern nations to note certain events or as places for worship, of which the great pagoda of Peking may be taken as an example. They are rather numerous on the banks of the Canton River. See Star Pagoda. Pah. A New Zealand stronghold. See Hep pa. Pahi, a large war canoe of the Society Islands. Paid off, see paying off. Painter, a rope attached to the bows of a boat, used for making her fast. It is spliced with a thimble to a ring bolt inside the stem. Cut your painter, make off. Pear oar, a name of the London wherry of a larger size than the skull. Pikesan gun, introduced by the French general Pikesan about 1830 for the horizontal firing of heavy shells, having much greater caliber but proportionally less metal than the then current solid shot guns. Palabras, Spanish words, hence palaver, amongst natives of new countries where the Spaniards have landed. Paladin, a knight errant. Palanquin, the covered litter of India. Palaver, see palabras. Pales and cross pales, the interior shores by which the timbers of a ship are kept to the proper breadth while in frame. Palisades, Spanish, palings for defensive purposes, formed of timber or stout stakes fixed vertically and sharpened at the head. Pallet, a ballast locker formerly used to give room in the hold for other storage. Palleting, a slight platform made above the bottom of the magazines to keep the powder from moisture. Palm, the triangular face of the fluke of an anchor, also a shield thimble used in sewing canvas, rope, etc. It consists of a flat thimble to receive the head of the needle, and is fixed upon a piece of canvas or leather across the palm of the hand, hence the name. Palmer, an old northern word for rudder, also a pilot. Palmetto, one of the palm tribe, from the sheath of which senate is worked for seamen's straw hats. Palm wine, a sub-acid and pleasant fermented tropical drink, see toddy. Pamban munch, or snake boat of Cochin, a canoe used on the numerous rivers and backwaters, from thirty to sixty feet long and cut out of the solid tree. The largest are paddled by about twenty men double-banked, and when pressed they will go as much as twelve miles an hour. Pampas, the savannah plains of South America, so extensive that, as Humboldt observes, whilst their northern extremity is bounded by palm trees, their southern limits are the eternal snows of the Magellanic Straits. Pampero, a violent squall of wind from the southwest, attended with rain, thunder, and lightning over the immense plains or pampas of the Rio de la Plata, where it rages like a hurricane. Pan, in firearms, is a small iron cavity of the old flintlock, adjacent to the touch-hole of the barrel, to contain the priming powder. Pancakes, 
thin floating rounded spots of snow ice in the Arctic seas, and reckoned the first indication of the approach of winter in August. Pandel, a Kentish name for the shrimp. Pandor, a northern name for a large oyster, usually taken at the entrance of the pans. Pangaea, a country vessel of East Africa, like a barge, with one mat sail of coconut leaves, the planks being pinned with wooden pins and sewed with twine. Pannikin, a small tin pot. Panyar, kidnapping negroes on the coast of Africa. Panshwe, a fast-pulling passenger boat used on the Hoogli. Pantograph, an instrument to copy or reduce drawings. Pantometer, an instrument for taking angles and elevations and measuring distances. Paolo, a papal silver coin, value five and one quarter pence. Ten paoli make a crown. Paps, coast hills, with rounded or conical summits. The lofty paps of Jura are three in number. Par, or par, in ichthyology, the samlet, branic or branling. Also, a commercial term of exchange where the monies are equalized. Para, a small Turkish coin of three aspers, one and a half farthing. Parabola, a geometric figure formed by the section of a cone when cut by a plane parallel to its side. Parade, an assembling of troops in due military order. Also, the open space where they parade or are paraded. The quarter-deck of a man of war is often termed the Sovereign's Parade. Parallactic Angle The angle made at a star by arcs passing through the zenith and pole, respectively. Parallax An apparent change in the position of an object, arising from a change of the observer's station, and which diminishes with the altitude of an object in the vertical circle. Its effect is greatest in the horizon, where it is termed the horizontal parallax, and vanishes entirely in the zenith. The positions of the planets and comets, as viewed from the surface of the earth, differ from those they would occupy, if observed from its center by the amount of parallax, the due application of which is an important element. The stars are so distant that their positions are the same from whatever part of the earth they are seen, but attempts have been made to detect the amount of variation in their places when observed from opposite points of the Earth's orbit, the minute result of which is termed the annual parallax, and the former effect, due to the observer's station on our globe, is called the diurnal parallax. Parallel, a term for those lines that preserve an equal distance from each other. It is sometimes used instead of latitude as our orders were to cruise in the parallel of Madeira. More definitely, they are imaginary circles parallel with the equator, 90 in the northern and 90 in the southern hemispheres. Parallel bar, in the marine steam engine, forms a connection with the pump rods and studs along the center line of the levers. Parallel of latitude is a circle parallel to the equator passing through any place. al Mukantar is the Arabic name. Parallelogram, a right-lined quadrilateral figure, the opposite sides of which are parallel and equal. Parallelopiped, a prism or solid figure containing under six parallelograms, the opposite sides of which are equal and parallel. Parallels, the trenches or lines made by a besieger parallel to the general defense of a place for the purpose of connecting and supporting his several approaches. Parallel sailing, sailing nearly on a given parallel of latitude. Parallels of declination, secondary circles parallel to the celestial equator. Paranzello, a small Mediterranean vessel, pink-sterned, with a Latin mainsail and mizzen and a large jib. Parapet, a breast-high defense against missiles, its top is usually sloped away to the front, that the defenders may conveniently fire over it, and it is preferred of earth, of a thickness proportionate to the kind of fire it is intended to resist. Its height also is often much increased. Parasang, a Persian military measure, sometimes assumed as a league, but equal to about four English miles. 
parbuckle, a method of hauling up or lowering down a cask or any cylindrical object where there's no crane or tackle. The middle of a rope is passed around a post. The two ends are then passed under the two quarters of the cask, bringing the ends back again over it, and they being both hauled or slackened together, either raise or lower the cask, etc., as may be required. The parbuckle is frequently used in public house vaults. Guns are parbuckled up steep cliffs without their carriages, and spars in timber yards are so dealt with. To parcel, to wind tarred canvas round a rope. Parceling, narrow strips of old canvas daubed with tar and frequently wound around a rope like bandages, previous to its being served. Par close, a name of the limber hole. Pardon, the gazetted amnesty or remission of penalty for deserters who return to their duty, the same as act of grace. Pargos, a fish resembling a large bream, from which the crews of Quiros and Cook suffered violent pains and bad effects, the porgy of Africa and the West Indies. Parhelion, a mock or false sun, sometimes more than one. Pariah, the low-cased people of Hindustan, outcasts, Pariah dogs, also outcasts of no known breed. Park, a piece of ground other than a battery, appointed for the ranging of guns or of ordnance stores. Parley, that beat of drum by which a conference with the enemy is desired. Synonymous with shamad. To parley, to bandy words. Parliament, heel. The situation of a ship when careened by shift of ballast, etc., or the causing her to incline a little on one side, so as to clean the side turned out of water, and cover it with fresh composition, termed boot-topping, which see. Parline, a term signifying the normal level of a barometer for a given station, or the mean pressure between 32 degrees and the sea level, to which last the observations are all to be corrected and reduced. Parole, the word of honour given by a prisoner of war until exchanged, also synonymous with word, which see. Parole evidence. In insurance cases, it is a general rule that the policy alone shall be conclusive evidence of the contract, and no parole evidence shall be received to vary the terms of it. Parrels or parrels. Those bands of rope, or sometimes iron collars, by which the centres of yards are fastened at the slings to the masts, so as to slide up and down freely when requisite. Parrel rope is formed of a single rope well served, and fitted with an eye at each end. This being passed round the yard is seized fast on. The two ends are then passed round the after part of the mast, and one of them being brought under, and the other over the yard, the two eyes are lashed together. This is seldom used but for the top gallant and smaller yards. Parrel with ribs and trucks, or jaw parrels. This is formed by passing the two parts of the parrel rope through the two holes in the ribs, observing that between every two ribs is strung a truck on each part of the rope. See ribs and trucks. The ends of the parrel rope are made fast with seizings. These were chiefly used on the top sail yards. Parrel with trucks is composed of a single rope passing through a number of bull's-eye trucks, sufficient to embrace the mast. These are principally used for the cheeks of a gaff. Parsis, the great native merchants of Bombay, etc., and a very useful class as merchants and shopkeepers all along the Malabar coast. They are the remains of the ancient Persians, and are guebers, or fire-worshippers. To part, to break a rope, to part from an anchor, is in consequence of the cable parting. Parton, a name on our northern coasts for the common sea crab. Parting, the state of being driven from the anchors by breaking the cables, the rupture or stranding of any tackle fall or hawser. Partisan, or pertuisan, a halbert formerly much used. Thus, in Shakespeare, Antony and Cleopatra, quote, I had as lief have a reed that will do me no service, as a partisan I could not heave. End quote. Also, a useful stirring man, fit for all sorts of desultory duties. Partisan warfare, insurrectionary, factional, and irregular hostilities. Partners, 
a framework of thick plank fitted round the several scuttles or holes in a ship's decks through which the masts capstans etc pass but particularly to support it when the mast leans against it partnership with a neutral cannot legalize commerce with a belligerent part owners unlike any other partnership they may be imposed upon each other without mutual consent whence arises a frequent appeal to both civil and common law see ship owner partridges grenades thrown from a mortar party the detachment of marines serving on board a man-of-war also a gang of hands sent away on particular duties pasha viceroy a turkish title of honour and command pass a geographical term abbreviated from passage and applied to any defile for crossing a mountain chain also any difficult strait which commands the entrance into a country also a certificate of leave of absence for a short period only also a thrust with a sword pass or passport a permission granted by any state to a vessel to navigate in some particular sea without molestation it contains all particulars concerning her and is binding on all persons at peace with that state it is also a letter of license given by authority granting permission to enter travel in and quit certain territories to pass to give from one to another and also to take certain turns of rope round a yard etc as pass the line along pass the gasket pass a seizing pass the word there etc passage a voyage is generally supposed to comprise the outward and homeward passages also a west country term for ferry sea voyage passage boat a small vessel employed in carrying persons or luggage from one port to another also a ferry boat passage broker one who is licensed to act in the procuring of passages by ships from one port to another passage money the allowance made for carrying official personages in a royal ship also the charge made for the conveyance of passengers in a packet or merchant vessel passages cuts in the parapet of the covered way to continue the communication throughout passant d'eau an ancient eight-pounder gun of fifteen feet passerie or passerado a rope in use when before the wind with lower studding sail booms out to haul out the clues of the foresail to tail blocks on the booms so as to full spread the foot of that sail past the having undergone a regular examination for preferment past boys those who have gone through the round of instruction given in a training ship pass volant a name given by the french to a quaker or wooden gun on board ship but it was adopted by our early voyagers as also expressing a movable piece of ordnance passport see pass password the countersign for answering the sentinels patache a portuguese tender from two hundred to three hundred tons for carrying treasure well armed and swift patacoon a spanish piece of eight worth four shillings sixpence patala a large and clumsy indian boat for baggage cattle etc patamar an excellent old class of advice boats in india especially on the bombay coast both swift and roomy they are grab built that is with a prow stern about seventy six feet long twenty one feet broad eleven feet deep and two hundred tons burden they are navigated with much skill by men of the mopila caste and other mussulmans patamometer an instrument for measuring the force of currents pataxos a small vessel formerly used by the spaniards as an advice boat patch the envelope used with the bullet in old rifles muzzle patch is a projection on the top of the muzzle of some guns doing away with the effect of dispart in laying patella the limpet of which there are two hundred and fifty known species paterero a kind of small mortar sometimes fired for salutes or rejoicing especially in roman catholic countries on holidays paternoster work the framing of a chain pump path the trajectory of a shell patu patu a formidable weapon with sharp edges used by the polynesian islanders and new zealanders as a sort of battle-axe to cleave the skulls of their enemies patrol the night rounds to see that all is right and to ensure regularity and order
patron or padrone, the master of a merchant vessel or coaster in the Mediterranean, also a cartridge box from the time of Elizabeth. Paul bit, a strong timber fixed perpendicularly at the back of the windlass in the middle, serving to support the system of pawls which are pinned into it as well as to add security to the machine. That is a pawler, a closer or stopper, an unanswerable or puzzling decision. Paul Rim, a notched cast-iron capstan ring let into the ship's deck for the pawls to act on. Pawls, or pawls, a stout but short set of bars of iron fixed close to the capstan whelps or windlass of a ship to prevent them from recoiling and overpowering the men. Iron or wood brackets suspended to the pawl bits of a windlass and dropping into appropriate scores act as a security to the purchase. To the windlass it is vertical, for capstans, horizontal, bolted to the whelps and butting to the deck rim. Paul there, Maharty, tell us no more of that. Discontinue your discourse. Paunch mat, a thick and strong mat formed by interweaving sinnet or strands of rope as close as possible. It is fastened on the outside of the yards or rigging to prevent their chafing. Pavilion, a state tent. Pavillon, French, colours, flag, standard. Pavisor, formerly a soldier who was armed with a pavise or buckler. Pock, a young lobster. Paul, see Pauls. Pay, a buccaneering principle of hire, under the notion of plunder and sharing in prizes, was no purchase, no pay. To pay, from French, poi, pitch. To pay a seam is to pour hot pitch and tar into it after caulking, to defend the oakum from the wet, also to beat or drub a person, a sense known to Shakespeare as well as to seamen. To pay a mast or yard, to anoint it with tar, turpentine, rosin, tallow, or varnish. Tallow is particularly useful for those masts upon which the sails are frequently hoisted and lowered, such as top masts and the lower masts of sloops, schooners, etc. To pay a vessel's bottom, to cover it with tallow, sulphur, rosin, etc. See breaming. Pay away, the same as paying out, which see. To pass out the slack of a cable or rope. Pay down, send chests or heavy articles below. Paying off, the movement by which a ship's head falls off from the wind and drops to leeward. Also the paying off the ship's officers and crew, and the removal of the ship from active service to ordinary. Paying out, the act of slackening a cable or rope so as to let it run freely. When a man talks grandiloquently, he is said to be paying it out. Paymaster the present designation of the station formerly held by the purser, the officer superintending the provisioning and making payments to the crew, to pay round, to turn the ship's head, pay sergeant in the army, a steady non-commissioned officer selected by the captain of each company to pay the subsistence daily to the men after the proper deductions. End of section 5 Read by Sandra near Montreal 2023. Section 6 of the Sailor's Word Book. N to R by Admiral W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A digest of sea terms and phrases. P. E. to P. H. P. Ballast, a coarse freshwater sand used by ships in the China trade for stowing tea chests upon. P. or Pea Jacket, a skirtless, loose, rough coat made of flushing or pilot cloth. Peak, the more or less conical summit of a mountain, whether isolated or forming part of a chain, also the upper outer corner of those sails which are extended by a gaff. To peak. To raise a gaff or latine yard more obliquely to the mast, to stay peak or ride a short stay peak is when the cable and forestay form a line. A long peak is when the cable is in line with the mainstay. Peak downhaul, a rope row through a block at the outer end of the gaff to haul it down by. Peak halyards, 
The ropes are tackles by which the outer end of a gaff is hoisted, as opposed to the throat halyards, which see. Peak of an anchor. The bill or extremity of the palm, which, as seamen by custom drop the K, is pronounced P. It is tapered nearly to a point in order to penetrate the bottom. Peak purchase. A purchase fitted in cutters to the standing peak halyards to sway it up taut. Pearl. A beautiful concretion found in the interior of the shells of many species of mollusca, resulting from the deposit of nacreous substance round some nucleus, mostly of foreign origin. Damelia grina margaritifera, or pearl oyster of the Indian seas, yields the most numerous and finest specimens. Pectoral fins. The pair situated behind the gills of fishes, corresponding homologically to the four limbs of quadrupeds and the wings of birds. Pedestal blocks, synonymous with plumber blocks, which see. Pedestal rail, a rail about two inches thick, wrought over the footspace rail, and in which there is a groove to steady the heel of the balusters of the galleries. Pedro, an early gun of large calibre for throwing stone balls. Pedro a pie. Pedro P, the balance on one leg in walking a plank as a proof of sobriety. A man placed one foot on a seam and flourished the other before and behind, singing, How can a man be drunk when he can dance? Pedro P, at which word he placed the foot precisely before the other on the seam, till he proved at least he had not lost his equilibrium. This was an old custom. Peace, an old term for a fortified position. Pigar, the Manx or Erse term for a large skate. Peak, see peak. Peel, a stronghold of earth and timber for defense, also the wash of an oar. Pegasus, one of the ancient northern constellations of which the Lucida is Markab. Pekul, a Chinese commercial weight of about 130 or 132 pounds. Pelagians, fishes of the open sea. Pelican, a well-known water bird, also the old six-pounder culverin. Pell, from the British, pull, a deep hole of water, generally beneath the cataract or any abrupt waterfall, also a large pond. Pellet, an old word for shot or bullet. Pellet powder, has its grains much larger and smoother, and is intended to act more gradually than service gunpowder, but by the English it is at present considered rather weak. Pelta, an ancient shield, or buckler, formed of scales sewed on skins. Pemblico, a small bird whose cry was deemed ominous at sea as presaging wind. Pemmican, condensed venison or beef used by the hunters around Hudson's Bay, and largely provided for the Arctic voyages, as containing much nutriment in a small compass. Thin slices of lean meat are dried over the smoke of wood fires. They are then pounded and mixed with an equal weight of their own fat. It is generally boiled and eaten hot where fire is available. Pen, a cape or conical summit, also the Creole name for houses and plantations in the country, also an enclosure for fishing on the coast. Pina or Penon, high rocks on the Spanish coasts. Penang, lawyer. A cane, with the administration of which debts were wont to be settled at Pulo Penang. Pencil, a small streamer or pennon. Pendant, see pennant. Pendant, a strop or short piece of rope, fixed on each side under the shrouds upon the heads of the main and foremasts, from which it hangs as low as the cat harpings, having an iron thimble spliced into an eye at the lower end to receive the hooks of the main and fore tackles. There are besides many other pendants, single or double ropes, to the lower extremity of which is attached a block or tackle. Such are the fish pendant, stay tackle pendant, brace pendant, yard tackle pendant, reef tackle pendant, etc., all of which are employed to transmit the efforts of their respective tackles to some distant object. Rudder pendants, strong ropes made fast to a rudder by means of chains. Their use is to prevent the loss of the rudder, if by accident it should get unshipped. Pendulum, 
a gravitating instrument for measuring the motion of a ship and thereby assisting the accuracy of her gunnery in regulating horizontal fire penguin a web-footed bird of the genus Aptenodites, unable to fly on account of the small size of its wings but with great powers of swimming and diving generally met with in high southern latitudes peninsula a tract of land joined to a continent by a comparatively narrow neck termed an isthmus peninsular war a designation assigned to the duke of wellington's campaigns in portugal and spain penknife ice a name given by parry to ice the surface of which is composed of numberless irregular vertical crystals nearly close together from five to ten inches long about half an inch broad and pointed at both ends supposed to be produced by heavy drops of rain piercing their way through the ice rather than by any peculiar crystallization while freezing pennant a long narrow banner with st george's cross in the head and hoisted at the main it is the badge of a ship of war signal pennants are nine feet long tapering from two feet at the mast to one foot they denote the vessels of a fleet there are ten pennants which can be varied beyond any number of ships present when the pennant is half mast it denotes the death of the captain when hauled down the ship is out of commission broad pennant denotes a commodore and is a swallow-tailed flag the tails tapering and would meet if the exterior lines were prolonged those of a cornet could not pennant ship generally means the commodore and vessels in the employ of government it is also an authority delegated by the commander of convoy to some smart merchant ship to assist in the charge and collect stragglers pennock a little bridge thrown over a watercourse penny witty a haddock dried without being split pensioners disabled soldiers or sailors received into the superb institutions of chelsea and greenwich or recently if they choose receiving out pensions penstock a floodgate to a mill pond also used in fortification for the purpose of inundating certain works pentagon a right-lined figure of five equal sides and angles penumbra the lighter shade which surrounds the dark shadow of the earth in an eclipse of the moon also the light shade which usually encircles the black spots upon the sun's disk peon wood see poon wood piota a craft of the adriatic of light burden propelled by oars and canvas pepper dulse halaminia edulis a pungent seaweed which as well as h palmata common dulse is eaten in scotland percentage a proportional sum by which insurance brokerage freight del credere etc are paid purser a rapier a short sword perch a pole stuck upon a shoal as a beacon or a spar erected on or projected from a cliff whence to watch fish percussion the striking of one body by another produce a corruption from enfant perdu to designate those soldiers who are selected for the forlorn hope which see perigee that point in the moon's orbit where she's nearest to the earth or the point in the earth's orbit where we are nearest to the sun perihelion that point in the orbit of a planet or comet which is nearest to the sun perico an undecked boat of burden in bengal peril or peril of the sea does not mean danger or hazard but comprises such accidents as arise from the elements and which could not be prevented by any care or skill of the master and crew see act of god perimeter the sum of all the sides of a geometrical figure taken together periodical winds see monsoon and trade winds periodic inequalities those disturbances in the planetary motions caused by their reciprocal attraction in definite periods periodic time the interval of time which elapses from the moment when a planet or comet leaves any point in its orbit until it returns to it again periphery the circumference of any curved figure perishable munition 
the public notice by the court of admiralty for the sale of a ship in a perishable condition whose owners have proved contumacious periwinkle the winwinkle of the anglo-saxon a favourite little shellfish the pin patch or turbo litorius permanent magnetism the property of attraction and repulsion belonging to magnetized iron see induced magnetism permanent rank that given by commission and which does not cease with any particular service permit a license to sell goods that have paid the duties or excise perpendicle the plumb line of the old quadrant perpendicular a right line falling from or standing upon another vertically and making the angle of ninety degrees on both sides perry an old term for a sudden squall personnel a word adopted from the french and expressive of all the officers and men civil and military composing an army or a naval force perspective the old term for a hand telescope also the science by which objects are delineated according to their natural appearance and situation persuader a rattan colt or rope's end in the hands of a boatswain's mate also a revolver perturbations the effects of the attractions of the heavenly bodies upon each other whereby they are sometimes drawn out of their elliptic paths about the central body as instanced by the wondrous discovery of neptune Passage, a custom or duty paid for weighing merchandise or other goods. Paseta or pistarine, a Spanish silver coin, one fifth of a piastre. Pesherable or pastarable, of our old statutes, implied such merchandise as take up much room in a ship. Petard, a hat shaped metal machine holding from six to nine pounds of gunpowder. It is firmly fixed to a stout plank, and being applied to a gate or barricade is fired by a fuse, to break or blow it open. See powder bags. Petardier, the man who fixes and fires a petard, a service of great danger. Petcock, a tap or valve on a pump. Peter, see, blue Peter. Peter boat, a fishing boat of the Thames and Medway, so named after St. Peter, as the patron of fishermen, whose cross keys form part of the armorial bearings of the Fishmongers' Company of London. These boats were first brought from Norway and the Baltic. They are generally short, shallow, and sharp at both ends, with a well for fish in the centre, twenty-five feet overall and six feet beam. Yet in such craft boys were wont to serve out seven years' apprenticeship, scarcely ever going ashore. Peter Mann, or Peterer, a fisherman, also the Dutch fishing vessels that frequented our eastern coasts. Petitory suits. Causes of property, formerly cognizable in the Admiralty Court. Petrol. The kip sally of the ancients, and Mother Carey's chickens of sailors, of the genus Procellaria. They collect in numbers at the approach of a gale, running along the waves in the wake of a ship, whence the name Petero, in reference to St. Peter's attempt to walk on the water. They are seen in all parts of the ocean. The largest of the petrels, Procellaria fulginosa, is known by seamen as Mother Carey's Goose. Petroleum, called also rock, mineral, or coal oil, a natural oil widely distributed over the globe, consisting of carbon and hydrogen in the proportion of about eighty-eight and twelve per cent it burns fiercely with a thick black smoke and attempts not yet successful have been made to adapt it as a fuel for steamers petronel an old term for a horse pistol also for a kind of carbine peta a town adjoining the esplanade of a fort petticoat trousers a kind of kilt formerly worn by seamen in general but latterly principally by fishermen see galligaskins petty average small charges borne partly by a ship and partly by a cargo such as expenses of towing etc petty officer a divisional seaman of the first class ranking with a sergeant or corporal phalanx an ancient macedonian legion of varying numbers formed into a square 
compact body of pikemen with their shields joined. Pharonology denotes the study of and acquaintance with lighthouses. Pharos, a lighthouse, a watchtower. Phasilus, an ancient small vessel equipped with sails and oars. Phases, the varying appearances of the moon's disk during a lunation, also those of the inferior planets, Venus and Mercury, as they revolve round the sun. Philadelphia lawyer, enough to puzzle a Philadelphia lawyer, is a common nautical phrase for an inconsistent story. Finac, a species of trout, see Finac. Physical astronomy, the department of the science which treats of the causes of the motions of the heavenly bodies. Physical double star, see double star and binary system. End of section six, read by Sandra near Montreal. 2023. Section 7 of the Sailor's Word Book N to R by Admiral W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases P.I. To P.L. Piastre, a Spanish silver coin, value four shillings, three pence sterling. Also a Turkish coin of forty paras, or one shilling, seven pence. Picard, a boat of burden on the Severn, mentioned in our old statutes. Piccanini, a negro or mulatto infant. Picaroon, a swindler or thief, also a piratical vessel. Picari. Piratical theft on a small scale. Picari, an old word for stealing, under which name the crime was punishable by severe duckings. Picket, a pointed staff or stake driven into the ground for various military purposes, as the marking out plans of works, the securing horses to, etc. See also piquet, an outguard. Pickets. Two pointers for a mortar, showing the direction of the object to be fired at, though it be invisible from the piece. Pickle Heron, a sea sprite, borrowed from the Teutonic. Pickling, a mode of salting naval timber in our dockyards to ensure its durability. See Bernatise. To pick up a wind. Traverses made by oceanic voyagers to run from one trade or prevalent wind to another, with as little intervening calm as possible. Picturni, a name on our northern coasts for the Sterna Hironda, the tern or sea swallow. Pickle, see pickle. Pie, the beam or pole that is erected to support the gun for loading and unloading timber, also called pie tree. Piece of eight, the early name for the coin of the value of eight rails, the well-known Spanish dollar. Pier, a K, also a strong mound projecting into the sea to break the violence of the waves. Piercer, used by sailmakers to form eyelet holes. Piggin, a little pail having a long stave for a handle, used to bale water out of a boat. Pig iron, sea sow, an oblong mass of cast iron used for ballast. There are also pigs of lead. Quote, a nodding beam or pig of lead may hurt the very ablest head. End quote. Pigtail, the common twisted tobacco for chewing. Pig yoke, a name given to the old Davis quadrant. Pike, see half pike, a long, slender, round staff armed at the end with iron. See boarding pike and pike, formerly in general use but which gave way to the bayonet. Also the peak of a hill, also a fish, the Essox Lucius, nicknamed the freshwater shark. Pike turn, see chevaux de frise. Pill or pill, a creek subject to the tide. Pilchard, the Clopea pilchardus, a fish allied to the herring, which appears in vast shoals off the Cornish coast about July. Pile, a pyramid of shot or shell. To pile arms is to plant three firelocks together and unite the ramrods to steady the outspread butt-ends of the pieces resting on the ground. 
A pile is also a beam of wood driven into the ground to form by a number, a solid foundation for building upon. A sheeting pile has more breadth than thickness and is much used in constructing coffer dams. Pile driver, a machine adapted for driving piles, also applied to a ship given to pitch heavily in a seaway. Pilger, an east country term for a fish spear. Piling ice, in arctic parlance where from pressure the ice is raised slab over slab into a high mass which consolidates and is often mistaken for a berg. Pill, sea pill, a term on the western coast for a draining rivulet as well as the creek into which it falls. Pillage, wanton and mostly iniquitous plunder, but an allowed ancient practice both in this and other countries as shown by the sea ordinances of France and our black book of the Admiralty. Pillen, a north coast name for the sheer crab. Pillar of the hold, a main stanchion with notches for descent. Pillow, a dish composed at sea of junk, rice, onions, and fowls. It figured at the marriage feast of Commodore Trunion. It is derived from the Levantine pilaf. Pillow, a block of timber whereon the inner end of the bowsprit is supported. Pilmer, the fine small rain so frequent on our western coasts. Pilot, an experienced person charged with the ship's course near the coasts into roads, rivers, etc., and through all intricate channels in his own particular district. Branch pilot, one who is duly authorized by the Trinity Board to pilot ships of the largest draft. Pilotage the money paid to a pilot for taking a ship in or out of port, etc. Pilot cutter, a very handy, sharp-built sea boat used by pilots. Pilot fish, Nocrates Ductor, a member of the Scumber family, the attendant on the shark. Pilot's anchor, a kedge used for dropping a vessel in a stream or tideway. Pilot's fairway, or pilot's water a channel wherein, according to a usage, a pilot must be employed. Pinch gut, a miserly purser. Pinch gut pay, the short allowance money. Pine, a genus of lofty coniferous trees abounding in temperate climates and valuable for its timber and rosin. The masts and yards of ships are generally of pine, see pitch pine. Pine is also a northern term for drying fish by exposure to the weather. Ping, the whistle of a shot, especially the rifle bullets in their flight. Pingle, a small north country coaster. Pink, a ship with a very narrow stern, having a small square part above. The shape is of old date, but continued especially by the Danes, for the advantage of the quarter guns, by the ships being contracted abaft. Also one of the many names for the minnow, to pink, to stab, as between casks, to detect men stowed away. Pink stern, a very narrow boat on the severn. Pin mole, sea mole. Pinnace, a small vessel propelled with oars and sails of two and even three masts, schooner rigged, in size as a ship's boat, smaller than the barge, and like it, carvel built. The armed pinnace of the French coasts was of sixty or eighty tons burden, carrying one long twenty-four-pounder and one hundred men. In Henry the Sixth, Shakespeare makes the pinnace an independent vessel, though Falstaff uses it as a small vessel attending on a larger. Also, metaphorically, an indifferent character. Pinnold, a term on our southern shores for a small bridge. Pins, belaying pins short cylindrical pieces of wood or iron fixed into the fife rail and other parts of a vessel for making fast the running rigging pintados coloured or printed chintzes formerly in great demand from india and among the fine goods of a cargo pintail the anas acuta a species of duck with a long pointed tail also in artillery the iron pin on the axle tree of the limber to which the trail eye of the gun carriage is attached for travel. Pintles. The rudder is hung on to a ship by pintles and braces. The braces are secured firmly to the stern post by jaws. 
which spread and are bolted on each side. The pintles are hooks which enter the braces, and the rudder is then wood-locked. A dumb pintle on the heel finally takes the strain off the hinging portions. Pioneers A proportion of troops specially assigned to the clearing from natural impediments of the way for the main body, hence used generally in the works of an army, its scavenging, etc. Laborers of the country also are sometimes so used. Pipe a measure of wine containing two hogsheads, or 125 gallons, equal to half a ton. Also a peculiar whistle for summoning the men to duty, and directing their attention by its varied sounds. See, call. Pipe clay, known to the ancients under the name of paratonium, formerly indispensable to soldiers as well as the jolly marines. Pipe down. The order to dismiss the men from the deck when a duty has been performed on board ship. Pipe fish. A fish of the genus Syngnathus, with an elongated, slender body and long tubular mouth. Piper. A half-dried haddock. Also the shell Echinus sidaris. Also the fish Trigla lira. Piquette. A proportion of a force set apart and kept on the alert for the security of the whole. The outlying piquet, some distance from the main body, watches all hostile approach. The inlying piquet is ready to act in case of internal disorder or of alarm. Piracy. Depredation without authority or transgression of authority given by despoiling beyond its warrant. Fixed domain, public revenue, and a certain form of government are exempt from that character. Therefore the Barbary states were not treated by Europe as such. The Court of Admiralty is empowered to grant warrants to commit any person for piracy, only on regular information upon oath. By common law, piracy consists in committing those acts of robbery and depredation upon the high seas, which, if committed on land, would have amounted to felony, and the pirate is deemed hostus humani generis. Peragua, Spanish per agua, si perog. Pirate a sea robber, yet the word pirata has been formerly taken for a sea captain, also an armed ship that roams the seas without any legal commission and seizes or plunders every vessel she meets. Their colours are said to be a black field with a skull, a battle axe, and an hourglass. See Prahu. Piri, an old term for a sudden gust of wind. Pirl, an archaic word signifying a brook or stream. Pirogue, or piragua, a canoe formed from the trunk of a large tree, generally cedar or balsa wood. It was the native vessel which the Spaniards found in the Gulf of Mexico and on the west coasts of South America, called also a dugout boat in North America. Piscary, a legal term for a fishery, also a right of fishing in the waters belonging to another person. Pisces, the twelfth sign of the zodiac which the sun enters about the 21st of February. Piscis Australis, one of the ancient southern constellations, the lucida of which is Fomalhaut. Pistol, an old word for a swaggering rogue, hence Shakespeare's character in Henry V. Pistola, a papal gold coin of the sterling value of 13 shillings 11 pence. Pistole, a Spanish gold coin, Value sixteen shillings, sixpence sterling. Pistolet. This name was applied both to a small pistol and a Spanish pistole. Pistoliers. A name for the heavy cavalry from the time of James I. Pistol proof. A term for the point of courage for which a man was elected captain by pirates. Piston. In the marine steam engine a metal disc fitting the bore of the cylinder and made to slide up and down within it easily, in order by its reciprocating movement to communicate motion to the engine. Piston rod, a rod which is firmly fixed in the piston by a key driven through both. Pit, in the dockyards, see saw pit. Pitch, tar and coarse resin, boiled to a fluid yet tenacious consistence. It is used in a hot state with oakum, in caulking the ship to fill the chinks or intervals between her planks.
Also, in steam navigation, the distance between two contiguous threads of the screw propeller is termed the pitch. Also, in gunnery, the throw of the shot, to pitch, to plant or set, as tents, pavements, pitched battles, etc. Pitch boat. A vessel fitted for boiling pitch in, which should be veered astern of the one being caulked. Pitched. A word formerly used for stepped as of a mast, and also for throne. Pitch-house, a place set apart for the boiling of pitch for the seams and bottoms of vessels. To pitch in, to set to work earnestly, to beat a person violently, a colloquialism. Pitching, the plunging of a ship's head in a seaway, the vertical vibration which her length makes about her centre of gravity, a very straining motion. Pitch-kettle, that in which the pitch is heated, or in which it is carried from the pitch pot. Pitch ladle is used for paying decks and horizontal work. Pitch mop, the implement with which the hot pitch is laid on to ship's sides and perpendicular work. Pitch pine, pinus racinosa, commonly called Norway or red pine, sea pine. Pith, well known as the medullary part of the stem of a plant, but figuratively it is used to express strength and courage. Pit pan, a flat-bottomed, trough-like canoe used in the Spanish Main and in the West Indies. Pit powder, that made with charcoal which has been burned in pits, not in cylinders. Pivot, a cylinder of iron or other metal that may turn easily in a socket, also in a column of troops, that flank by which the dressing and distance are regulated, in a line, that on which it wheels. Pivot gun, mounted on a frame, carriage, which can be turned radially, so as to point the piece in any direction. Pivot ship. In certain fleet evolutions, the sternmost ship remains stationary, as a pivot upon which the other vessels are to form the line anew. Place. A fortress, especially its main body. Place for everything, and everything in its place. One of the golden maxims of propriety on board ship. Place of arms. In fortification, a space contrived for the convenient assembling of troops for ulterior purposes. The most usual are those at the salient and re-entering angles of the covered way. Placer. A Spanish nautical term for shoal or deposit. Also, for deposits of precious minerals. Places of call. Merchantmen must here attend to two general rules. If these places of call are enumerated in the charter party, then such must be taken in the order laid down. But if leave be given to call at all, or any, then they must be taken in their geographical sequence. Plugus. Latin. An old word for the divisions of the globe, as plugis of the north, the northern regions. Plain, a term used in contradistinction to mountain, though far from implying a level surface, and it may be either elevated or low. Plan, the area or imaginary surface defined by or within any described lines. In shipbuilding, the plan of elevation, commonly called the shear draft, is a side plan of the ship. See horizontal plan and body plan, or plan of projection. Plain, in a general sense, a perfectly level surface, but it is a term used by shipwrights, implying the area or imaginary surface contained within any particular outlines, as the plane of elevation or sheer draft, etc. Plane chart, one constructed on the supposition of the Earth's being an extended plane, and therefore but little in request. Plane of the meridian, see meridian. Plane sailing. That part of navigation which treats a ship's course as an angle, and the distance, difference of latitude, and easting or westing, as the sides of a right-angled triangle. The easting or westing is called departure. To convert this into difference of longitude, parallel, middle latitude, or mercantor sailing is needed, depending on circumstances. Plain sailing is so simple that it is colloquially used to express anything so easy that it is impossible to make a mistake. Plain triangle, one contained by three right lines. Primary planets, 
those beautiful opaque bodies which revolve about the sun as a center in nearly circular orbits see inferior minor and superior secondary planets the satellites or moons revolving about some of the primary planets the moon being our satellite planimetry the mensuration of plane surfaces plank thick boards eighteen feet long at least from one and one half to four inches thick and nine or ten inches broad of less dimensions it is called board or deal which see the latter being eight or nine inches wide by fourteen feet long planking the outside and inside casing of the vessel to plank it to sleep on the bare decks choosing as the galley saying has it the softest plank plank shear pieces of plank covering the timber heads round the ship also the gunwale or covering board the space between this and the line of flotation has latterly been termed the freeboard plan of the transoms the horizontal appearance of them to which the moulds are made and the bevelings taken plant a stock of tools etc also the fixtures machinery etc required to carry on a business planter in newfoundland it means a person engaged in the fishery and in the united states the naked trunk of a tree which embedded in a river becomes one of the very dangerous snag tribe to plash to wattle or interweave branches plastron a pad used by fencers also the shield on the under surface of a turtle plate in marine law refers to jewels plate or treasure for which freight is due thus plate ship is a galleon so laden backstay plate a piece of iron used instead of a chain to confine the dead eye of the backstay to the after channel foot hook or futtock plates iron bands fitted to the lower dead eyes of the topmast shrouds which passing through holes in the rim of the top are attached to the upper ends of the futtock shrouds plate armour thick coverings or coatings for ships on the new principle to render them impervious to shot and shell if kept just outside of breaking plate distance plateau an upland flat topped elevation platform a kind of deck for any temporary or particular purpose the orlop deck having storerooms and cabins forward and aft and the middle part allotted to the stowage of cables also the flooring elevation of stone or timber on which the carriage of a gun is placed for action hence in early voyages a fort or battery with well-mounted ordnance is called the platform platoon originally a small square body or subdivision of musketeers hence platoon exercise that which relates to the loading and firing of muskets in the ranks and platoon firing that is by subdivisions play motion in the frame masts etc also said of the marine steam engine when it is in action or in play also in long voyages or tedious blockades play acting may be encouraged with benefit for the excitement and employment thus afforded are not only good anti-scorbutics but also promoters of content and good fellowship in such quote, jack is not bound by critics crabbed laws but gives to all his unreserved applause he laughs aloud when jokes his fancy please such are the honest manners of the seas and never never may he ape those fools who lost to reason laugh or cry by rules End quote. plate an old term for a river boat pledget the string of oakum used in caulking also in surgery a small plug of lint pleiades the celebrated cluster of stars in taurus of which seven or eight are visible to the naked eye the assisted vision numbers over two hundred plenty tides full tides plicatiles ancient vessels built of wood and leather which could be taken to pieces and carried by land plunkets coarse woolen cloths of former commerce see statute one r three chapter eight plot or plot a plan or chart see ichnography plotting the making of the plan after an actual survey of the place has been obtained plough 
an instrument formerly used for taking the sun's altitude and possessed of large graduations when a ship cuts briskly through the sea she is said to plough it plucker the fishing frog lophius piscatorius plug a conical piece of wood to let in or keep out water when fitted to a hole in the bottom of a boat hawse plugs to stop the hawse holes when the cables are unbent and the ship plunges in a head sea shot plugs covered with oakum and tallow to stop shot holes in the sides of a ship near the water line being conical they adapt themselves to any sized shot holes plumb right up and down opposed to parallel to plumb to form the vertical line also to sound the depth of water plumber blocks these in a marine steam engine are wise wherein are fixed the bushes in which the shafts or pinions revolve plummet a name sometimes given to the hand lead or any lead or iron weight suspended by a string as used by carpenters etc plunder a name given to the effects of the officers and crew of a prize when pillaged by the captors though the act directs that nothing shall be taken out of a prize ship till condemned see pillage plunging fire a pitching discharge of shot from a higher level at such an angle that the shot do not ricochet plunging splash the descent of the anchor into the water when let go plush evidently from plus the overplus of the grog arising from being distributed in a smaller measure than the true one and assigned to the cook of each mess becomes a cause of irregularity see taut pluviometer or rain gauge a measurer of the quantity of rain which falls on a square foot there are various kinds to ply to carry cargoes or passengers for short trips also to work to windward to beat also to ply an oar to use it in pulling plymouth climate quote, the west wind always brings wet weather the east wind wet and cold together the south wind surely brings us rain the north wind blows it back again end quote. plymouth cloak an old term for a cane or walking stick end of section seven read by sandra near montreal twenty twenty three section eight of the sailor's word book n to r by admiral w h smythe this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases P.M. to P.O. P.M. Latin, Post Meridian. Post Meridian, on or after midday. P.O. Mark for a petty officer. Pochard, a kind of wild duck. Pocket, a commercial quantity of wool containing half a sack, also the frog of a belt. Pod, a company of seals or sea elephants. Pog, the miller's thumb, Cotus cataphractus. Pohagen, a fish of the herring kind, also called hardhead, which sea. Point, a low spit of land projecting from the main into the sea, almost synonymous with promontory or head also the rum the winds blow from to point a gun to direct it on a given object to point a sail to affix points through the islet holes of the reefs see points point beecher a low woman of portsmouth point blank direct on the object blank being the old word for the mark on the practice but point blank firing that wherein no elevation is given to the gun, its axis being pointed for the object. Point-blank range. The distance to which a shot was reckoned to range straight, without appreciable drooping from the force of gravity, it varied from 300 to 400 yards, according to the nature of gun, and was measured by the first graze of the shot fired horizontally from a gun on its carriage on a horizontal plane. The finer practice of rifled guns is much abating the use of the term, minute elevations being added to the point-blank direction for even the very smallest ranges. 
point brass or iron, a large sort of plumb for the nice adjustment of perpendicularity for a given line. Point de Galle canoe consists of a single stem of dup wood, 18 to 30 feet long, from one and a half to two and a half feet broad, and from two to three feet deep. It is fitted with a balance log at the ends of two bamboo outriggers, having the mast, yard, and sail secured together, and when sailing is managed in a similar way to the catamaran. They sail very well in strong winds, and are also used by the natives of the eastern archipelago, especially at the Fiji group, where they are very large. Pointer, the index or indicator of an instrument, station pointer, a brass graduated circle with one fixed and two radial legs, by placing them at two adjoining angles taken by a sextant between three known objects, the position of the observer is fixed on the chart. Pointer board, a simple contrivance for duly training a ship's guns. Pointers, stout props placed obliquely to the timbers of whalers to sustain the shock of icebergs, all braces placed diagonally across the hold of any vessel to support the bilge and prevent loose working are called pointers. Also, the general designation for the stars Alpha and Beta in the Great Bear, a line through which points nearly upon the pole star. Point holes, the eyelet holes for the points. Pointing, the operation of unlaying and tapering the end of a rope and weaving some of its yarns about the diminished part, which is very neat to the eye, prevents it from being fagged out and makes it handy for reeving in a block, etc. Point of the compass, the thirty-second part of the circumference, or eleven degrees, fifteen minutes. Points, see reef points. Armed at all points is when a man is defended by armor cap -a -pie. Points of service, the principal details of duty which ought to be executed with zeal and alacrity. Polaker, a ship or brig of the Mediterranean, the masts are commonly formed of one spar from truck to heel, so that they have neither tops nor cross trees, neither have they any foot ropes to their upper yards, because the men stand upon the topsail yards to loose and furl the top gallant sails, and upon the lower yards to loose, reef, or furl the topsails, all the yards being lowered sufficiently for that purpose. Polans, knee pieces in armor. Polar circles, the Arctic and the Antarctic, 23 degrees, 28 minutes from either pole. Polar compression, see compression of the poles. Polar distance, the complement of the declination, the angular distance of a heavenly body from one of the poles, counted on from zero degrees to one hundred and eighty degrees. Polaris, see pole star. Polar regions, those parts of the world which lie within the Arctic and Antarctic circles. Pol Davis, or Pol Davy, a canvas from Danzig, formerly much used in our navy. A kind of sailcloth, thus named, was also manufactured in Lancashire from about the year 1500 and regulated by statute, Jacobus 1, chapter 24. Pole, the upper end of the highest masts when they rise above the rigging. Polax or Polax, a sort of hatchet resembling a battle-axe which was used on board ship to cut away the rigging of an adversary. Also, in boarding an enemy whose hull was more lofty than that of the boarders, by driving the points of several into her side, one above another, and thus forming a kind of scaling ladder, hence were called boarding axes. Pole March, the commander-in-chief of an ancient Greek army. Pole Masts, single spar masts, also applied where the top gallant and royal masts are in one, sea mast. Poles two points on the surface of the earth, each ninety degrees distant from all parts of the equator, forming the extremities of the imaginary line called the earth's axis. The term applies also to those points in the heavens towards which the terrestrial axis is always directed, under bare poles, the situation of a ship at sea when all her sails are furled. See scud and try. Pole star, Alpha Ursae Minoris. This most useful star is the Lucida of the Little Bear, 
round which the other components of the constellation and the rest of the heavens appear to revolve in the course of the astronomical day. Policy, a written contract by which the insurers oblige themselves to indemnify sea risks under various conditions. An interest policy is where the insurer has a real, assignable interest in the thing insured. A wager policy is where the insurer has no substantial interest in the thing insured. An open policy is where the amount of interest is not fixed, but left to be ascertained in case of loss. A valued policy is where an actual value has been set on the ship or goods. Pollock, the Merlangus Pollacius, a well-known member of the Cod family. Pollux, Beta Geminorum, a bright and well-known star in the ancient constellation Gemini, of which it is the second in brightness. Polron, that part of the armour which covered the neck and shoulders. Poltroon, not known in the navy. Polygon, a geometrical figure of any number of sides more than four, regular or irregular. In fortification the term is applied to the plan of a piece of ground fortified or about to be fortified, and hence in some countries to a fort appropriated as an artillery and engineering school. Polymeter, an instrument for measuring angles. Polynesia, a group of islands, a name generally applied to the islands of the Pacific Ocean collectively, whether in clusters or straggling. Pomelo, or Pumelo, Citrus decumana, a large fruit known by this name in the East Indies, but in the West by that of Shaddock, after Captain Shaddock, who introduced it there. Pomfret, a delicate sea fish taken in great quantities in Bombay and Madras. Pomelian, a name given by seamen to the cascable or hindmost knob on the breech of a cannon. Ponches, small bulkheads made in the hold to stow corn, goods, etc. Poncho, a blanket with a hole in the centre, large enough for the head to pass through, worn by natives of South and Western America. Pond, a word often used for a small lagoon, but improperly, for ponds are formed exclusively from springs and surface drainage, and have no affluent. Also, a cant name for the Mediterranean. Also, the summit level of a canal. Ponant, western. Poniard, a short dagger with a sharp edge. Pontage, a duty or toll collected for the repair and keeping of bridges. Pontons. Ancient square-built ferry boats for passing rivers, as described by Caesar and Aulus Gellius. Pontoon, a large, low, flat vessel resembling a barge of burden, and furnished with cranes, capstans, tackles, and other machinery necessary for careening ships. They are principally used in the Mediterranean, also a kind of portable boat, especially adapted for the formation of the floating bridges required by armies. They are constructed of various figures, and of wood, metal, or prepared canvas, the latter being most in favour at present, and have the necessary superstructure and gear packed with them for transport. Poo, a small crab on the Scottish coast. Pood, a Russian commercial weight, equal to thirty-six pounds English. Poodle, an old Cornish name for the English Channel also a slang term for the aide-de-camp of a garrison general. Pool is distinguished from a pond in being filled by springs or running water, also a pool or port. Poop, from the Latin pupis, the aftermost and highest part of a large ship's hull, also a deck raised over the after part of a spar deck, sometimes called the round house. A frigate has no poop, but is said to be pooped, when a wave strikes the stern and washes on board. Pooping or being pooped, the breaking of a heavy sea over the stern or quarter of a boat or vessel, when she scuds before the wind in a gale, which is extremely dangerous, especially if deeply laden. Poop lantern, a light carried by admirals to denote the flagship by night. Poop netting, sea hammock nettings. Poop rails, the stanchions and rail work in front of the poop. See breastwork and fife rails. Poop royal. A short deck or platform placed over the aftermost part of the poop 
being the largest of the French and Spanish men of war, and serving as a cabin for their masters and pilots. This is the top gallant poop of our shipwrights, and the former roundhouse cabin of our merchant vessels. Poor John, hake fish salted and dried, as well as dried stockfish and bad bacalao, or cod, especially cheap and coarse. Shakespeare mentions it in Romeo and Juliet. Poplar, the tree which furnishes charcoal for the manufacture of gunpowder. Poplar, an old name for a seagull. Puppets, upright pieces of stout square timber, mostly fir, between the bottom and bilgeways, at the run and entrance of a ship about to be launched, for giving her further support. Also, puppets on the gunwale of a boat support the wash strake and form the rowlocks. Poplin Sea Waves in irregular agitation. Poor Beagle, a kind of shark. Porpoise, porpoise, or porpoise. The Focaina communis, one of the smallest of the cetacean or whale order, common in the British seas. Port, an old Anglo-Saxon word still in full use. It strictly means a place of resort for vessels adjacent to an emporium of commerce, where cargoes are bought and sold or laid up in warehouses, and where there are docks for shipping. It is not quite a synonym of harbour, since the latter does not imply traffic. Vessels hail from the port they have quitted, but they are compelled to have the name of the vessel and of the port to which they belong painted on the bow or stern. Port is also, in a legal sense, a refuge more or less protected by points and headlands, marked out by limits, and may be resorted to as a place of safety, though there are many ports but rarely entered. The left side of the ship is called port by admiralty order, in preference to larboard as less mistakable in sound for starboard, to port the helm, so to move the tiller as to carry the rudder to the starboard side of the stern post. Bar port, one which can only be entered when the tide rises sufficiently to afford depth over a bar. This in many cases only occurs at spring tides. Close port, one within the body of a city, as that of Rhodes, Venice, Amsterdam, etc. Free port, one open and free of all duties for merchants of all nations to load and unload their vessels, as the ports of Genoa and Leghorn. Also a term used for a total exemption of duties which any set of merchants enjoy, for goods imported into a state, or those exported of the growth of the country. Such was the privilege the English enjoyed for several years after their discovery of the port of Archangel, and which was taken from them on account of the regicide in 1648. Portable soup and other preparations of meat, of late years a very valuable part of naval provision. Portage, tonnage, also the land carriage between two harbours, often high and difficult for transport. Also, in Canadian river navigation, means the carrying canoes or boats and their cargo across the land, where the stream is interrupted by rocks or rapids. Port arms, the military word of command to bring the firelock across the front of the body, muzzle slanting upwards, a motion preparatory for the charge bayonets or for inspecting the condition of the locks. Port bars, Strong pieces of oak, furnished with two lanyards by which the ports are secured from flying open in a gale of wind, the bars resting against the inside of the ship. The port is first tightly closed by its hooks and ring bolts. Port charges, or harbour dues. Charges levied on vessels resorting to a port. Portcullis. A heavy frame of wooden or iron bars sliding in vertical grooves within the masonry over the gateway of a fortified town to be lowered for barring the passage. When hastily made, it was termed a sarazine. Port. See sublime port. Port fire. A stick of composition, generally burning an inch a minute, used to convey fire from the slow match or the like to the priming of ordnance, though superseded with most guns by locks or friction tubes. With a slightly altered composition, it is used for signals, also for firing charges of mines. Port flange. In ship carpentry is a batten of wood fixed on the ship's side over a port to prevent water or dirt going into the port. Port glaive. A sword bearer. Port last or portice. Synonymous with gunnel. 
Portman, a name in old times for the inhabitants of the saint Paul, the Burgesses of Ipswich are also so called. Port Moat, a court held in haven towns or ports. Port Nails, these are classed double and single. They are similar to clamp nails, and like them are used for fastening ironwork. Port Pendants, ropes spliced into rings on the outside of the port lids and rove through leaden pipes in the ship's sides to work the port lids up or down by the tackles. Port Peace, an ancient piece of ordnance used in our early fleets. Port Peace Chamber, a patarero for loading a port piece at the breach. Port Reeve, a magistrate of certain seaport towns in olden times. Port Ropes, those by which the ports are hauled up and suspended. Ports or port holes, the square apertures in the sides of a ship through which to point and fire the ordnance, also aft and forward as the bridle port in the bows, the quarter port in round stern vessels, and stern ports between the stern timbers, also square holes cut in the sides, bow or stem of a merchant ship for taking in and discharging timber cargoes and for other purposes. Gunroom ports are situated in the ship's counter and are used for stern chasers and also for passing a small cable or a hawser out, either to moor head and stern or to spring upon the cable, etc. See moor and spring. Half port, a kind of shutter which hinges on the lower side of a port and falls down outside when clear for action. When closed, it half covers the port to the line of metal of the gun and is firmly secured by iron hooks. The upper half-port is temporary and loose, will not stand a heavy sea, and is merely secured by two light inch-rope lanyards. Port sail, a public sail of fish on its arrival in the harbour. Port sashes, half-ports fitted with glass for the admission of light into cabins. Port shackles, the rings to the ports. Port sills, in shipbuilding, pieces of timber put horizontally between the framing to form the top and bottom of a port. Port tackles, those falls which haul up and suspend the lower deck ports, so that, since the Admiralty order for using the word port instead of larboard, we have port port tackle falls. Portuguese, a gold coin, value one pound sixteen shillings, called also moia dobras. Portuguese man of war. A beautiful floating acalafan of the tropical seas, the Physalia pelagica, position, ground or water occupied, or that may be advantageously occupied in fighting order. Position, geographical, of any place on the surface of the earth is the determination of its latitude and longitude and its height above the level of the sea. Possessory, a suit entered in the admiralty court by owners for the seizing of their ship. Post, any ground, fortified or not, where a body of men can be in a condition for defence or fighting an enemy. Also the limits of a sentinel's charge. Post captain, formerly a captain of three years standing, now simply captain, but equal to colonel in the army, by date of commission. Posted, promoted from commander to captain in the navy, a word no longer officially used. Postern, a small passage constructed through some retired part of a bastion or other portion of a work for the garrison's minor communications with the town, unperceived by the enemy. Posting, placing people for special duty, also publicly handing out a bad character. Post of honour, the advance and the right of the lines of any army. Pouch, a case of strong leather for carrying ammunition used by soldiers, marines and small arm men. Also the crop of a shark. Pouches. Wooden bulkheads across the hold of cargo vessels to prevent grain or light shingle from shifting. Pauldron. A shoulder piece in armour, corrupted from a pauldron. Poulterer. Called Jemmy Ducks on board ship. He assists the butcher in the feeding and care of the livestock, etc. Pound. A lagoon, or space of water, surrounded by reefs and shoals, wherein fish are kept, as at Bermuda. Pound and pint idler. A sobriquet applied to the purser. Pounder. 
a denomination applied to guns according to the weight of the shot they carry at present everything larger than the hundred pounder is described by the diameter of its bore coupled with its total weight pow a name on the scotch shores for a small creek also a mole powder see gunpowder to powder to salt meat slightly as falstaff says quote, if thou embowel me to-day, I'll give you leave to powder me, and eat me too to-morrow. Powdering tub, a vessel used for pickling beef, pork, etc. Powder bags, leathern bags, containing from twenty to forty pounds of powder, substituted for petards at the instance of Lord Cochrane, as being more easily placed. They have been lately called gusney bags. Powder hoy an ordnance vessel expressly fitted to convey powder from the land magazine to a ship it invariably carries a red distinguishing flag and warns the ship for which the powder is intended to put out all fires before she comes alongside powder magazine the prepared space allotted for the powder on board ship powder monkey formerly the boy of the gun who had charge of the cartridge now powder man powder vessel a ship used as a floating magazine. Power. Mechanical force. In the steam engine, it is esteemed effective, expansive, or full. Seahorse power. Pozzolana. Volcanic ashes used in cement, especially if required under water. End of section 8. Read by Sandra near Montreal. 2023. Section 9 of the Sailor's Wordbook, N to R, by Admiral W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases, P. R. Practicable, said of a breach in a rampart when its slope offers a fair means of ascent to an assaulting column. Practical Astronomy, a branch of science which includes the determination of the magnitude, distance, and phenomena of the heavenly bodies, the ready reduction of observations for tangible use in navigation and geography, and the expert manipulation of astronomical instruments. Precursoriae, ancient vessels which led or preceded the fleets. Predatoriae, or predaticae, long, swift, light, ancient pirates. Prahu, Malay for boat. The larger war vessels among the Malays range from 55 to 156 feet in length and carry 76 to 96 rowers with about 40 to 60 fighting men. The guns range from 2 inches to 6 inches bore, are of brass and mounted on stock pieces, 4 to 10 being the average. These boats are remarkable for their swiftness. Praia, Spanish, Playa the beach or strand on Portuguese coasts, prairie, the natural meadows or tracts of gently undulating, wonderfully fertile land, occupying so vast an extent of the great river basins of North America, pram or pram, a lighter used in Holland and the ports of the Baltic for loading and unloading merchant ships. Some were fitted by the French with heavy guns for defending the smaller ports. Prunkel, a channel term for the prawn, Pratique, a Mediterranean term, implying the license to trade and communicate with any place after having performed the required quarantine, or upon the production of a clean bill of health. Prawn, a marine crustacean larger than a shrimp, much esteemed as an article of food. Prayer book, a smaller handstone than that which sailors call Bible. It is used to scrub in narrow crevices where a large holy stone cannot be used. See holy stone. Precedence, the order and degree of rank among officers of the two services, see rank. Procession of the equinoxes, a slow motion of the equinoctial points in the heavens, whereby the longitudes of the fixed stars are increased at the present rate of about fifty and one quarter minutes annually, the equinox having a retrograde motion to this amount. This effect is produced by the attraction of the sun, moon, and planets upon the spheroidal figure of the earth. The lunisolar precession is the joint effect of the sun and moon only. Predi, or pretty, a word formerly used in our ships for get ready, as predi the main deck, 
or get it clear. Preemption, a right of purchasing necessary cargoes upon reasonable compensation to the individual whose property is thus diverted. This claim is usually restricted to neutrals, avowedly bound to the enemy's ports, and is a mitigation of the former practice of seizing them. See Comiatus. Premium, simply a reward, but in commerce it implies the sum of money paid to the underwriters on ship or cargo, or parts thereof, as the price of the insurance risk. Prerogative, a word of large extent. By the Constitution of England, the sovereign alone has the power of declaring war and peace. The Crown is not precluded by the Prize Act from superseding prize proceedings by directing restitution of property seized before adjudication and against the will of the captors. Present the military word of command to raise the musket, take aim, and fire. Present arms the military word of command to salute with the musket. Present use stores to be immediately applied in the fitting of a ship as distinguished from the supply for future sea use. Preserved meat and vegetables. The occasional use of such food and lime juice at sea is not only a great luxury, but in many cases essential to the health of the crew, as especially instanced by the increase of scurvy in ships where this precaution is neglected. President. At a general court-martial, it is usual for the authority ordering it to name the president, and the office usually falls upon the second in command. To press. To reduce an enemy to straits. See impressment. Press gang. A party of seamen who, under the command of a lieutenant, were formerly empowered in time of war to take any seafaring men on shore or afloat and compel them to serve on board men of war. Those who were thus taken were called pressed men. Press of sail. As much sail as the state of the wind, etc., will permit a ship to carry. Pressure gauge. The manometer of a steam engine. Pressed. Formerly signified quick or ready, and a pressed man was one willing to enlist for a stipulated sum, the very reverse of the pressed man of later times, see press gang. Prester, an old name for a meteor. Presumptive evidence is such as, by a fair and reasonable interpretation, is deducible from the facts of a case. Preventer, applied to ropes, etc., when used as additional securities to aid other ropes in supporting spars, etc., during a strong gale, as preventer backstays, braces, shrouds, stays, etc., preventer plates, stout plates of iron for securing the chains to the ship's side. One end is on the chain plate bolt, the other is bolted to the ship's side below it. Preventer stoppers, short pieces of rope, knotted at each end, for securing the clues of sails or rigging during action, or when strained. Preventive service. The establishment of coast guards at numerous stations along the shores of the United Kingdom for the prevention of smuggling. Pricker. A small marlin spike for making and stretching the holes for points and rope bands in sails. Also the priming wire of a gun. Also a northern name for the basking shark. Pricking a sail. The running a middle seam between the two seams, which unite every cloth of a sail to the next adjoining. This is rarely done till the sails have been worn some time, or in the case of heavy canvas, storm sails, etc. It is also called middle stitching. Pricking for a soft plank. Selecting a place on the deck for sleeping upon. Pricking her off. Marking a ship's position upon a chart by the help of a scale and compasses, so as to show her situation as to latitude, longitude, and bearings of the place bound to. Pride of the morning. A misty dew at sunrise, a light shower, the end of the land breeze followed by a dead calm in the tropics. Priest's cap. An outwork which has three salient angles at the head and two inwards. Primage. Premium of insurance. Also a small allowance at the waterside to master and mariner for each pack or bale of cargo landed by them, otherwise called hat money. Primary planet. See planets primary. Prime. The forepart of the artificial day, that is, the first quarter after sunrise. To prime. To make ready a gun, mine, etc. for instantaneous firing. Also to pierce the cartridge with the priming wire and apply the quill tube in readiness for firing the cannon. To prime a fire ship. To lay the train for being set on fire. To prime a match. Put a little wet bruised powder made into the paste called devil upon the end of the rope slow match 
with a piece of paper wrapped around it. Prime vertical, that great circle which passes through the zenith and the east and west points of the horizon. Priming irons consist of a pointed wire used through the vent to prick the cartridge when it is home, and of a flat-headed one similarly inserted after discharge to ensure it is not retaining any ignited particles. Priming valves, the same with escape valves. Printed instructions, the name of the volume formerly issued by the Admiralty to all commanders of ships and vessels for their guidance, now superseded by Queen's regulations. To prize, to raise or slew weighty bodies by means of a lever purchase or power, see prizing. Prize bolts, knobs of iron on the cheeks of a gun carriage to keep the handspike from slipping when prizing up the breech. Prism, in dioptrics, is a geometrical solid bounded by three parallelograms whose bases are equal triangles. Prismatic compass, one so fitted with a glass prism for reading by reflection that the eye can simultaneously observe an object and read its compass bearing. Prisoner at large, free to take exercise within bounds. Prisoners of war, men who are captured after an engagement, who are deprived of their liberty until regularly exchanged or dismissed on their parole. Prisoner under restraint, suspended from duty, deprived of command. Prison ship, one fitted up for receiving and detaining prisoners of war. Pritch, a dentated weapon for striking and holding eels. Private, the proper designation of a soldier serving in the ranks of the army, holding no special position. Privateer practice or privateerism. Disorderly conduct or anything out of man-of-war rules. Privateers or men-of-war equipped by individuals for cruising against the enemy. Their commission, see Letters of Mark, is given by the Admiralty and revocable by the same authority. They have no property in any prize until it is legally condemned by a competent court. The Admiral on the station is entitled to a tenth of their booty. This infamous species of warfare is unhappily not yet abolished among civilized nations. Private property. Commissions of privateers do not extend to the capture of private property on land, a right not even granted to men of war. Private armed ships are not within the terms of a capitulation protecting private property generally. Private signal. Understood by captains having the key, but totally incomprehensible to other persons. Privy coat a light coat or defence of mail, concealed under the ordinary dress. Prize, a vessel captured at sea from the enemies of a state, or from pirates, either by a man of war or privateer. Vessels are also looked upon as prize if they fight under any other standard than that of the state from which they have their commission, if they have no charter party, and if loaded with effects belonging to the enemy or with contraband goods. In ships of war, the prizes are to be divided among the officers, seamen, etc., according to the Act, but in privateers, according to the agreement between the owners. By Statute 13, George II, Chapter 4, judges and officers, failing in their duty in respect to the condemnation of prizes, forfeit five hundred pounds, with full costs of suit, one moiety to the crown and the other to the informer. Prize, according to jurists, is altogether a creature of the crown, and no man can have any interest but what he takes as the mere gift of the crown. Partial interest has been granted away at different times, but the statute of Queen Anne, Anno Domini 1708, is the first which gave to the captors the whole of the benefit. Prize Act of 1793 ordained that the officers and sailors on board every ship and vessel of war shall have the sole property in all captures, being first adjudged lawful prize, to be divided in such proportions and manner as His Majesty should order by proclamation. In 1746, a man, though involuntarily kept abroad above three years in the service of his country, was deemed to have forfeited his share to Greenwich. Prize Acts though expiring with each war, are usually revived nearly in the same form. Prizage, the tenth share belonging to the crown out of a lawful prize taken at sea. Prize court, a department of the Admiralty Court, oye et termine, to hear and determine according to the law of nations. Prize goods, those taken upon the high seas, ure belly, from the enemy. Prize list, a return of all the persons on board, whether belonging to the ship or supernumeraries. At the time a capture is made, those who may be absent on duty are included. 
prize master, the officer to whom a prize is given in charge to carry her into port. Prize money, the profits arising from the sale of prizes. It was divided equally by Charter V, Henry IV. Prizing, the application of a lever to lift or move any weighty body, also the act of pressing or squeezing an article into its package so that its size may be reduced in stowage. Proa, or flying prow, see prahu. Probation, the novitiate period of cadets, midshipmen, apprentices, etc. Probe, a surgical sounder, to probe, to inquire thoroughly into a matter. Proceeds, the product or produce of prizes, etc. Procession, a march in official order. At a naval or military funeral, the officers are classed according to seniority, the chiefs last. Letters of procuration are required to be exhibited in the purchase of ships by agents in the enemy's country. Procyon, Alpha Canis Minoris, the principal star of the lesser dog. Prod, a poke or slight thrust, as in persuading with a bayonet. Prod, a crossbow for throwing bullets from the time of Henry VII. Production, for obtaining the benefits of trading with our colonies, it is necessary that the goods be accompanied by a certificate of production, in the manner required by marine law. See Origin. Profile Drafts. In naval architecture, a name applied to two drawings from the sheer draft. One represents the entire construction and disposition of the ship, the other her whole interior work and fittings. Profile of a fort. See Orthographic Projection. Prog. A quaint word for victuals. Swift says, quote, In town you may find better prog. End quote. It is also a spike. Progression, see arc of direction. Projectiles, bodies which are driven by any one effort of force from the spot where it was applied. Projection, a method of representing geometrically on a plane surface varied points, lines, and surfaces not lying in any one plane, used in charts and maps, where it is of various kinds as globular, orthographic, mercators, etc. In shipbuilding, an elevation taken amidship, see body plan. Proking spit, a long Spanish rapier. Promiscui usus a law term for those articles which are equally applicable to peace or war. Promontory, a high point of land or rock projecting into a sea or lake, tapering into a neck inland, and the extremity of which, towards the water, is called a cape or headland, as Gibraltar, Ceuta, Actium, etc. Promovent, the plaintiff in the instance court of the Admiralty. Prong, synonymous with beam arm or crow foot, which see. Proof, the trial of the quality of arms, ammunition, etc., before their reception for service. Guns are proved by various examinations and by the firing of prescribed charges, powder by examinations, and by carefully measured firings from each batch. Proofs of property, attestations, letters of advice, invoices, to show that a ship really belongs to the subjects of a neutral state. Proof timber. In naval architecture, an imaginary timber expressed by vertical lines in the shear draft to prove the fairness of the body. Propeller. This term generally alludes to the Archimedean screw or screw propeller. Proper motion of the stars. A movement which some stars are found to possess, independent of the apparent change of place due to the precession of the equinoxes, the accounting for which is as yet only ingenious conjecture. Proportion. In naval architecture, the length, breadth, and height of a vessel, having a due consideration to her rate and the object she is intended for. Propets. Those shores that stand nearly vertical. Prospective or prospect glass. An old term for a deck or hand telescope with a terrestrial eyepiece. See spyglass. Protections on paper against impressment were but little regarded, yet seafaring men above fifty-five and under eighteen were by statute exempted, as were all for the first two years of their going to sea, foreigners serving in merchant ships or privateers, and all apprentices for three years. Protest. A formal declaration drawn up in writing and attested before a notary public, a justice of the peace or a consul in foreign parts by the master of a merchant ship, 
his mate, and a part of the ship's crew, after the expiration of a voyage in which the ship has suffered in her hull, rigging, or cargo, to show that such damage did not happen through neglect or misconduct on their part. Protractor, an instrument for laying off angles on paper, having an open mark at the center of the circle with a radial leg, and vernier, which is divided into degrees, generally ninety. To prove, to test the soundness of firearms by trying them with greater charges than those used on service. Providore, Spanish, one who provided victuals for ships. Provender, though strictly forage, is often applied to provisions in general. Provisions, all sorts of food necessary for the subsistence of the army and navy, those shipped on board for the officers and crew of any vessel, including merchant ships, are held in a policy of insurance as part of her outfit. Proviso, a stern fast or hawser carried to the shore to steady by. A ship with one anchor down and a shore fast is moored a proviso, also a saving clause in a contract. Provo Marshal, the head of the military police, an officer appointed to take charge of prisoners at a court-martial and to carry the sentences into execution, the executive and summary police in war. Prow generally means the foremost end of a vessel, also a name for the beak of a zebek or felucca. End of section 9, read by Sandra, near Montreal, 2023. Section 10 of the Sailor's Word Book, N to R, by William Henry Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases. P U to Q. Puka, a word in frequent use among the English in the East Indies, signifying sterling of good quality. Pucker. A wrinkled seam in sail-making, also anything in a state of confusion. Puddening, or pudding, a thick wreath of yarns, matting, or oakum called a dolphin, tapering from the middle towards the ends, grafted all over, and fastened about the main or four masts of a ship, directly below the trusses, to prevent the yards from falling down, in case of the ropes by which they're suspended being shot away. Puddings are also placed on a boat's stem as a kind of fender, and also laid round the rings of anchors to prevent hempen cables or hawsers from chafing. Pudding and dolphin, a larger and lesser pad made of ropes, and put around the masts under the lower yards. Puddle dock, an ancient pool of the Thames, the dirtiness of which afforded Jack some pointed sarcasms. Puddling, a technical term for working clay to a plastic state in an enclosed space until it is of the requisite consistence for arresting the flow of water, a term in iron furnace work. Puff, a sudden gust of wind, a whistle of steam. Puffin, the fratercula arctica, a sea bird with a singular bill, formerly supposed to be a bird in show, but a fish in substance, in consequence of which notion the Pope permitted its being eaten in Lent. Pulas, an excellent twine made by the Malays from the Kalui, a species of nettle. Pulaway boys, a name given on the west coast of Africa to the native crewmen who are engaged by the shipping to row boats and do other work not suited to Europeans in that climate. To pull foot, to hasten along, to run. Pulling, the act of rowing with oars as pull the starboard oars, pull together, pull over an East Country term for a carriageway. Pulo, the Malay word for island, and frequently met with in the islands of the eastern seas. Pulwar, a commodious kind of passage boat on the Ganges. Pummel, the hilt of a sword, the end of a gun, etc. To pummel, to drub or beat. Pump, a well-known machine used for drawing water from the sea or discharging it from the ship's pump well. Chain pump consists of a long chain, equipped with a sufficient number of metal discs armed with leather, fitting the cylinders closely and placed at proper distances, which working upon two wheels, one above deck and the other below, in the bottom of the hold, passes downward through a copper or wooden tube, and returning upward through another, continuously lifts portions of water, 
It is worked by a long winch handle at which several men may be employed at once, and it thus discharges more water in a given time than the common pump, and with less labour. Main pumps. The largest pumps in a ship, close to the main mast, in contradistinction to bilge pumps, which are smaller and intended to raise the water from the bilges when a ship is laying over, so that it cannot run to the main pump well. Hand pump is the distinctive appellation of the common small pump, superseded by Downton and others. Pump barrel, the wooden tube which forms the body of the machine and wherein the piston moves. Pump bolts, saucer-headed bolts to attach the brake to the pump standard and pump spear. Pump brake, the handle or lever of the old and simplest form of pump. Pump carlins, the framing or partners on the upper deck between which the pumps pass into the wells. Pump chains, the chains to which the discs, etc., are attached in the chain pump. Pump cisterns are used to prevent chips and other matters getting to and fouling the action of the chain pumps. Pump coat, a piece of stout canvas nailed to the pump partners where it enters the upper deck and lashed to the pump to prevent the water from running down when washing decks, etc. Pump dales. Pipes are long wooden spouts extending from the chain pumps across the ship and through each side, serving to discharge the water without wetting the decks. Pump foot, the lower part or well end of a pump. Pump gear, a term implying any materials requisite for fitting or repairing the pumps, as boxes, leather, etc. Pump hook, an iron rod with an eye and a hook, used for drawing out the lower pump box when requisite. Pumpkin or pompion, cucurbita, pepo, a useful vegetable for sea use. Pump ship, the order to the crew to work the pumps, to clear the hold of water. Pump spear, the rod of iron to which the upper box is attached, and to the upper end of which the brake is pinned, whereby the pump is put in motion. Pump sucks, the pump sucks is said when all the water being drawn out of the well, and air admitted, there comes up nothing but froth and wind, with a whistling noise, which is music to the fagged seamen. Pump tacks. Small iron or copper tacks used for nailing the leather on the pump boxes. Punch. An iron implement for starting bolts in a little, or for driving them out, called a starting or teeming punch. Also, a well-known sea drink, now adopted in all countries. It was introduced from the East Indies, and is said to derive its name from panch, the Hindustani word for five, in allusion to the number of its ingredients. See boule ponge. Punishment, the execution of the sentence against an offender, as awarded by a court-martial or adjudged by a superior officer. Punishment drill, fatiguing exercise or extra drill for petty delinquencies. Punk, the interior of an excrescence on the oak tree, used as tinder and better known as touchwood. See spunk. Punt, an Anglo-Saxon term still in use for a flat-bottomed boat, used by fishermen, or for ballast lumps, etc. Poise, spiked poles used in propelling barges or keels. Purchase, any mechanical power which increases the force applied. It is of large importance to nautical men in the combinations of pulleys, as whip, gun-tackle, luff-tackle, jeer, viol, luff-upon-luff, runner, double-runner, capstan, windlass, etc. To purchase a commission, a practice in our army which has been aptly termed the buying of fetters, it is the obtaining preferment at regulated prices. At present the total value of a commission in a regiment of infantry of the line ranges from four hundred and fifty pounds for an ensigncy, up to four thousand five hundred and forty for a lieutenant colonelcy, and higher in the other branches of the service. Purchase Blocks all blocks virtually deserve this name, but it is distinctively given to those used in moving heavy weights. Purchase falls. The rope rove through purchase blocks. Pur, a name for the Dunlin, Tringa alpina, a species of sandpiper, frequenting our shores and the banks of rivers in winter. Purse net, a peculiar landing net in fishing. It is used in the seine and trawl to bewilder the fish and prevent their swimming out when fairly inside, like a wire mouse trap. Purser, an officer appointed by the Lords of the Admiralty to take charge of the provisions and slops of a ship of war, and to see that they were carefully distributed to the officers and crew, according to the printed naval instruction. 
He had very little to do with money matters beyond paying for short allowance. He was allowed one-eighth for waste on all provisions embarked, and additional on all provisions saved, for which he paid the crew. The designation is now discarded for that of paymaster. Purser's dip, the smallest dip candle. Purser's grins, sneers. Purser's name, an assumed one, during the war when pressed men caught at every opportunity to desert. They adopted aliases to avoid discovery of free taken, which alias was handed to the purser for entry upon the ship's books. Purser's pound, the weight formerly used in the navy by which the purser retained an eighth for waste, and the men received only seven-eighths of what was supplied by government. One of the complaints of the mutiny was having the purser's instead of an honest pound. This allowance was reduced to one-tenth. Purser's shirt. Like a purser's shirt on a handspike, a comparison for clothes fitting loosely. Purser's steward. The official who superintended and noted down the exact quantity and species of provisions issued to the respective messes, both of officers and men. Purser's stocking. A slop article which stretched to any amount put into it. See, show a leg. To pursue. To make all sail in chase. To push. To move a vessel by poles. Pushing for a port. Carrying all sail to arrive quickly. Put about. Go on the other tack. To put back. To return to port. Generally, the last left. Puthag. A name on the Scottish shores for the porpoise. It is a Gaelic word signifying the blower. To put into port. To enter an intermediate or any port in the course of a voyage, usually from stress of weather. Put off or push off. The order to boats to quit the ship or the shore. Putting a ship in commission. The formal ceremony of hoisting the pennant on the ship to be fitted. This act brought the crew under martial law. Putting a steam engine in gear. This is said when the gab of the eccentric rod is allowed to fall upon its stud on the gab lever. Puttock, a cormorant, a ravenous fellow. Puttock shrouds, synonymous with footock, a word in use but not warranted. To put to sea, to quit a port or roadstead and proceed to the destination. Picar, a herring boat or small vessel, treated of in Statute 31, Edward III, Chapter 2. To pike, an old word signifying to haul on a wind. Pike Maw, the great tern, Larus ridibundus, a species of seagull. To pike off, to go away silently. Pipari, a sort of vessel made of several pieces of wood merely lashed together, hardly superior to a raft, but sharp forward to cut the water. Pyramid, a solid, the base of which is any right-lined plain figure, and its sides are triangles, having their vertices meeting in one point named its vertex. Pyrotechne, the science of artificial fireworks, including not only such as are used in war, but also those intended for amusement. Q. Quaid, an old word for unsteady. Quaid wind, a veering one. Quadrant, a reflecting instrument used to take the altitude above the horizon of the sun moon, or stars at sea, and thereby to determine the latitude and longitude of the place, etc., etc. It was invented by Hadley. Also, in speaking of double stars, or of two objects near each other, the position of one component in reference to the other is indicated by the terms north following, north proceeding, south following, or south proceeding, the word quadrant being understood a gunner's quadrant for determining the gun's angle of elevation, the long arm is inserted into the bore, while the short one remains outside with a graduated arc and plummet showing the inclination. For depression, on the contrary, the long arm must be applied to the face of the piece. Also, a graduated arc on the carriage showing, by an index on the trunnion, the gun's elevation above the plane of its platform. First applied by the gallant Captain Broke. The mural quadrant was framed and fitted with telescope, divisions, and plumb line, firmly attached to the side of a wall built in the plain of the meridian, used only in large observatories. Senecal quadrant consists of several concentric quadratic arcs, divided into eight equal parts by radii, with parallel right lines crossing each other at right angles.
It was made of brass or wood, with lines drawn from each side, intersecting one another, and an index divided by signs also with ninety degrees on the limb and two sights on the edge, to take the altitude of the sun. Sometimes, instead of signs, they were divided into equal parts. It was in great use among the French navigators, from its solving the problems of plain sailing. To quadrate, to trim a gun on its carriage and its trucks, to adjust it for firing on a level range. Quadrature. The moon is said to be in quadrature at the first and last quarter, when her longitude differs ninety degrees from that of the sun. Quadroon. From Latin, quator, four. The offspring of a mulatto woman and a white man. Quagmire. A marsh in which from its concave and impermeable bottom the waters remain stagnant, rendering the surface a quaking bog. Quaker. A false or wooden gun, so called in allusion to the friends, not fighting. Qualified property, not only those who have an absolute property in ships and goods, but those also who have but a qualified property therein, may insure them. See equitable title. Qualities. The register of the ship's trim, sailing, stowage, etc., all of which are necessary to her behavior. Quamino, a negro. Quant an old term for a long pole used by the bargemen on our east coast. It's capped to prevent the emerged end from sticking in the mud. Quarantine is at most a seclusion of forty days from a free communication with the inhabitants of any country in order to prevent the importation of the plague or any other infectious disorder, either by persons or goods. The quarantine laws originated in the Council of Health at Venice in the fourteenth or fifteenth century. See Lazaretto. Quarrel, the short dart or arrow shot from a crossbow, or the bricole of the Middle Ages. Quarry, the prey taken by whalers, a term borrowed from falconers. Quart, in sword defense, was one of the four guards, and also a position in fencing. Quarter, this term literally implies one quarter of the ship, but in common parlance applies to forty-five degrees abaft the beam. Thus the log is hove over the lee quarter. Quarter boats hang abaft the mizzenmast, etc. Again, the quarters apply to the divisional batteries as forward, main, middle, or lower decks, forecastle, and quarter deck, and yet these comprise both sides. Close quarters may be on any point, and the seaman rather delights in the bow attack, using the bowsprit as his bridge. Giving quarter. The custom of asking and giving quarter in warfare originated, it is said, between the Dutch and Spaniards, that the ransom of an officer or soldier should be a quarter of his year's pay. No quarter is given to pirates, but is always given to a vanquished honourable opponent, on the quarter, forty-five degrees abaft the beam. First quarter, when the moon appears exactly as a half-moon, ninety degrees from the sun towards the east, she is in the first quarter with her western half illuminated. Last quarter, when the moon appears exactly as a half-moon, and her angular distance from the sun, ninety degrees, but towards the west, she is said to be in the last quarter, with her eastern half illuminated. Quarter badge. Artificial galleries, a carved ornament near the stern of those vessels which have no quarter galleries. Quarter bill. A list containing the different stations to which the officers and crew are quartered in time of action, with their names. Quarter blocks, blocks fitted under the quarters of a yard, on each side the slings, for the topsail sheets, topsail clue lines, and topgallant sheets to reeve through. Quarter boat, any boat is thus designated which is hung to davits over the ship's quarter. Quarter cask, one half of a hogshead, or twenty-eight imperial gallons. Quarter cloths, long pieces of painted canvas extended on the outside of the quarter netting, from the upper part of the gallery to the gangway. Quarter davits, pieces of iron or timber with sheaves or blocks at their outer ends, projecting from a vessel's quarters, to hoist boats up to. Quarter deck, that part of the upper deck which is abaft the main mast, see decks and jacks quarter deck. Quarter deckers, those officers more remarkable for etiquette than for knowledge of seamanship. Quarter deckish, punctilious, severe, Quarter-deck nettings. See netting. Quarter-deck officers. A term implying the executive in general, officers whose places in action are there, in command. Quarter-fast. See fast. Quarter-flood. See flood. 
Quarter gallery, a sort of balcony with windows on the quarters of large ships. See gallery. Quarter galley, a Barbary cruiser. Quarter guard, a small guard posted in front of each battalion in camp. Quarter gunner, see gunner. Quarter ladder, from the quarter deck to the poop. Quarterly account of provisions, a return sent to the admiral and victualling board at the expiration of every three months. Quarterly bill, the document by which officers draw three months' personal pay. Quarterly returns, those made every three months to the admiral or senior officer of the offences and punishments, the officers serving on board, etc. Quarterman, a dockyard officer employed to superintend a certain number of workmen. Quartermaster, a petty officer appointed to assist the master and mates in their several duties, as stowing the hold, coiling the cables, attending the binnacle and steerage, keeping time by the watch glasses, assisting in hoisting the signals, and keeping his eye on general quarter deck movements. In the army, a commissioned officer ranking with subalterns, charged with the more immediate supervision of quarters, camps, and the issue of arms, ammunition, rations, stores, etc., for his own regiment. Quartermaster General is the head of that department of the army which has charge of the quartering, encamping, embarking, and moving of troops, and of the supply of stores connected therewith. Quarter nettings, the places allotted on the quarters for the stowage of hammocks, which in action serve to arrest musket balls. Quarter pieces, projections at the after part of the quarter, forming the boundaries of the galleries. Quarter point. A subdivision of the compass card equal to two degrees forty eight minutes forty five seconds of the circle. Quarter ports, those made in the after side timbers and especially in round stern vessels. They are inconvenient for warping and generally fitted with rollers. Quarter rails, narrow moulded planks reaching from the stern to the gangway and serving as a fence to the quarter deck where there are no ports or bulwarks. Quarters. The several stations where the officers and crew of a ship of war are posted in time of action, sea, battle, engagement, etc. But this term differs in the army, for the soldier's quarters are his place of rest, sea headquarters, winter quarters, etc. Quarter sites, the engraved index on the base rings of cannon in quarter degrees from point blank to two or three degrees of elevation. Quarter slings are supports attached to a yard or other spar at one or both sides of, but not in, its center. Quarters of the yards, the space comprehended between the slings, or middle and halfway out on the yard arms. Quarter stanchions, strong iron stanchions in a square-sterned vessel, connecting the main rail with the taffrail, used for ridge ropes to extend the awnings. Quarter tackle, a strong tackle fixed occasionally upon the quarter of the main yard, to hoist heavy bodies in or out of the ship. Quarter timbers, the framing timbers in a vessel's quarter. Quarter watch, a division of one-fourth of the crew into watches, which in light winds and well-conducted ships is enough, but the officers are in three, and they must not be found nodding. Quarter wind, blowing upon a vessel's quarter abaft the main shrouds. Quashi, the familiar designation of a West Indian negro, Quatuor Maria, or British Seas, are those four which surround Great Britain. K. C. Key. Cabrada, from the Spanish for ravine or broken ground. Cabranta Huesos, Spanish, literally bone breaker, the great petrel, Procularia gigantea. Queche, a small Portuguese smack. Queen Anne's free gift. A sum of money, formerly granted to surgeons annually, in addition to their monthly twopences from each man, or as often as they pass their accounts. Queen's Cockpit. A mess of dissolute mates and midshipmen of the old Queen, 98, who held a sort of examination of a ribaldry for a rank below that of gentlemen. Queen's Own. Sea provision, when a Queen reigns, similar to King's Own. Queen's Parade. The Quarter Deck. Quercitron. Quercus tinctoria, the name of a North American oak, which affords a valuable yellow dye. Quereman, a mullet of Guyana, found in turbid waters, where it lives by suction. Cuerpo, Spanish, cuerpo, body, a close, short jacket. Quote, 
long quartered pumps with trousers blue and cuerpo jacket which last was new End quote. to quicken in shipbuilding to give anything a greater curve as to quicken the shear opposed to straightening it quicklime that which is unslacked good for cleaning and whitewashing ships holds quick march or quick step the ordinary pace is three and a quarter miles to the hour or one hundred and ten paces two hundred and seventy five feet to the minute quick match used as a train to any charge to be fired rapidly is made of cotton threads treated with a composition of gunpowder gum and water and burns nearly as would a train of loose powder quick relief one who turns out speedily to relieve the watch before the sound is out of the bell quick sand a fine-grained loose sand into which a ship sinks by her own weight as soon as the water retreats from her bottom quick saver a span formerly used to prevent the courses from bellying too much when off the wind quick step see quick march quick work generally signifies all that part of a ship which is under water when she's laden it is also applied to that part of the inner upper works of a ship above the covering board also the short planks worked inside between the ports in shipbuilding the term strictly applies to that part of a vessel's side which is above the chain wells and decks as well as to the strakes which shut in between the spricketings and clamps in general parlance quick work is synonymous with spricketing quid the cha or dose of tobacco put into the mouth at a time quid est hoc asked one tapping the swelled cheek of his messmate hoc est quid promptly replied the other quietus a severe blow a settler quihi the sobriquet of the english stationed or resident in bengal the literal meaning being who is there it is the customary call for a servant one always being in attendance though not in the room quilkin a west country term for a frog quill driver captain's clerk purser's secretary et hoc genus omne quill tubes those in use with port fires for firing guns before the introduction of detonating and friction tubes see tubes quilting a kind of coating formed of sinnet strands of rope etc outside any vessel containing water also the giving a man a beating with a rope's end quincunx forming a body of men checkerwise a method of surveying a coast by five vessels in quincunx was proposed by a dalrymple to the admiralty when that board would not have allowed of the employment of one quink a name in the orkneys for the golden-eyed duck anas clangula quintal a commercial weight of a hundred pounds quintain an early military sport to try the agility of our country youth kent the fifth guard in fencing quishens the old term for quis the pieces of armour which protected the thighs quittance a release or discharge in writing for a sum of money or other duty which ought to be paid or done on the ship's account quod durance prison coin a wooden wedge adjusted to support the breech of a gun so as to give the muzzle the required elevation or depression also one of the mechanical powers coins are employed to wedge off casks of liquids from each other and steady them in order that their bilges may not rub at sea and occasion leaks coast the old spelling of coast see elliot's dictionary fifteen fifty nine quota men those raised for the navy at enormous expense by pitt's quota bill in seventeen ninety five under bounties of from twenty pounds to sixty pounds End of section 10, read by Sandra, near Montreal, 2023. Section 11 of the Sailor's Word Book, N to R, by Admiral W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases r to r a r in the muster book means run and is placed against those who have deserted or missed three musters r a see right ascension rabinet or rabinet 
a small slender piece of ordnance formerly used for ship's barricados it had a one-inch bore which carried about a half-pound ball rabbit or rebate an angular incision cut longitudinally in a piece of timber to receive the ends of a number of planks to be securely fastened therein thus the ends of the lower planks of a ship's bottom terminate upon the stem afore and on the stern post abaft the surface of the garboard streak whose edge is let into the keel is in the same manner level with the side of the keel at the extremities of the vessel they are therefore termed stem stern or keel rabbits race strong currents producing overfalls dangerous to small craft they may be produced by narrow channels crossing of tides or uneven bottoms such are the races of portland alderney etc also a mill race or tail course to race applies to marking timber with the race tool race horse alka a duck of the south seas thus named says cook for the great swiftness with which they run on the water now called a steamer rack the superior stratum of clouds or that moving rapidly above the scud the line in which the clouds are driven by the wind is called the rack of the weather in shakespeare's beautiful thirty-third sonnet the sun rises in splendour but quote, anon permits the basest clouds to ride with ugly rack on his celestial face and from the forlorn world his visage hide stealing unseen to west with this disgrace End quote. also a frame of timber containing several sheaves as a fair leader also various rails for belaying pins to rack to seize two ropes together with racking or cross turns rack bar a billet of wood used for twisting the bite of a swifter round in order to bind a raft firmly together rack block a range of sheaves cut in one piece of wood for running ropes to lead through rack hurry the tramway on which coal wagons run to a hurry racking spun yarn or other stuff used to rack two parts of a rope together racking a tackle or a lanyard the fastening two running parts together with the seizing so as to prevent it from rendering through the blocks racking turns see nippering rack rider the name of the samlet in northern fisheries so called because it generally appears in bad weather to rattle to interlace as in making boats gripes and flat gaskets rud french an old spelling of the sea term road sea road radius the semi-diameter of a circle limb of a sextant etc radius bar of parallel motion an intervening lever for guiding the side rods of a steam engine radius vector an imaginary line joining the centres of the sun and a planet or comet in any point of its orbit radius a term used for the constellation eridanus raft a sort of float formed by an assemblage of casks planks or pieces of timber fastened together with swifters and raft dogs side by side as well as tier upon tier the timber and plank with which merchant ships are laden in the different ports of the baltic are attached together in this manner in order to float them off to the shipping but the rafts of north america are the most gigantic in the world also a kind of floating bridge of easy construction for the passage of rivers by troops etc raft dog a broad flat piece of iron having a sharp point at each end with the extremities bent at right angles there are also dog hooks having the shoulder bent into a hook by which the raft chains are secured or suddenly thrown off and released rafting conveying goods by floating as by raft chains lashings etc raft port a large square hole framed and cut through the buttocks of some ships immediately under the counter or forward between the breast hooks of the bow to load or unload timber rag bolts those which are jagged or barbed to prevent working in their holes and to make them hold more securely the same as barb bolts rails narrow pieces of wood with mouldings as ornaments mortised into the heads of stanchions or nailed for ornament on several parts of a ship's upper works rails of the head curved pieces of timber extending from the bows on each side to the continuation of the ship's stem to support the knee of the head etc 
rails of the stern, see stern rails. Rainbow, quote, a rainbow towards night, fair weather in sight. Rainbow at night, sailors delight. Rainbow in morning, sailors take warning. End quote. Rain cloud, see nimbus. Rains, belts or zones of calms where heavy rain prevails. They exist between the northeast and southeast trade winds, changing their latitude several degrees, depending on the sun's declination. In India, the rains come in with the southwest monsoon. To raise, to make an object subtend a larger angle by approaching it, which is the foundation of perspective, and an effect increased by the sphericity of our globe, the opposite of laying, which see. To raise a siege, to abandon or cause the abandonment of a siege, raised upon, when a vessel is heightened in her upper works. Raise net, a kind of staked net on our northern shores, so called from rising and falling with the tide. Raise or rise tacks and sheets. The lifting the clues of the courses, previously to bracing round the yards in tacking or wearing. To raise the metal. To elevate the breech and depress thereby the muzzle of a gun. To raise the wind. To make an exertion. To cast about for funds. Raising a mouse. The process of making a lump on a stay. See, mouse. Raising a purchase. The act of disposing certain machines so that, by their mutual effects, they may produce sufficient force to overcome the weight or resistance of the object to which this machinery is applied. Rake. The projection of the upper parts of a ship, at both ends, beyond the extremities of the keel, also the deviation of the masts from the vertical line of position, reckoned from the keel forward or aft. Raking. Cannonading a ship so that the shot shall range in the direction of her whole length between decks called a raking fire, and is similar to military enfilading. Rakish, said of a ship when she has the appearance of force and fast sailing. Rallying square, that formed by skirmishers or dispersed troops when suddenly menaced by cavalry. Each man, as he runs in, successively placing himself with his back close against those already formed. Ram, a long spar, iron hooped at the ends, used for driving out blocks from beneath a vessel's keel, and for driving planks an end while only wedged to the ship's side. Also a new rating in the navy, see steam ram. Rambad, the elevated platform built across the prow of a galley for boarding, etc. Rammed, the state of a ship on the stocks, when all the frames are set upon the keel, the stem and stern post put up and the hole adjusted by the ram line. Ram head, an old word for halyard block. To ram home, to drive home the ammunition in a gun. Rammer, a cylindrical block of wood nearly fitting the bore of a cannon and fastened on a wooden staff, used in loading to drive home the charge of a cannon. Ramp, an oblique or sloping interior road to mount the terraplan of the rampart. Rampart, an artificial embankment surrounding a fortified place, capable of covering the buildings from view and of resisting the cannon of an enemy, generally having a parapet on its top and a wall for its front. Ramper eel, a name of the lamprey, Petromycin marinus. Ram reel, synonymous with bull dance. Ram rod, in muzzle loading, is the implement used in charging a piece to drive home the powder and shot. Ramshackle, out of repair and ungainly, disorderly. Ran, yarns coiled on a spun yarn winch. Rance, the strut or support of a congreve rocket. Randan, a mode of rowing with alternate long and short oars. Random shot, a shot or coup perdu, made when the muzzle is highly elevated. The utmost range may be at an angle of 45 degrees, which is supposed to carry about ten times as far as the point plank, but improved gunnery has now put the term out of use. Range, placed in a line or row, a term hydrographically applied to hills as the coast range, also galley range or fire grate. To range, to sail in a parallel direction and near to as we ranged the coast, the enemy came ranging up alongside of us. Range heads, the windless bits, which see. Range of a gun, 
the horizontal distance which it will send a shot at a stated elevation to the point of its first graze also a place where gun practice is carried on also a level range implies the gun lying horizontal the various positions between this and forty five degrees are called intermediate ranges range of cable a sufficient quantity of cable left slack to allow the anchor to reach the ground before the cable is checked by the double turns round the bits the object being to let the anchor hook the bottom quickly and to prevent the heavy shock which would be caused if its weight were suddenly brought upon the bits ranges horned pieces of timber containing belaying pins inside a ship also pieces of oak placed round the hatchways to contain shot rank degree of dignity officers of the navy rank with those of the army according to the following table one the admirals of the fleet rank with field marshals two admirals rank with generals three vice admirals rank with lieutenant generals four rear admirals rank with major generals five captains of the fleet and commodores six rank with brigadier generals seven captains of three years rank with colonels eight captains under three years rank with lieutenant colonels nine commanders next to d o ten lieutenants eight years rank with majors eleven lieutenants under eight years rank with captains twelve sub-lieutenants rank with lieutenants thirteen midshipmen rank with ensigns also the order or straight line made by men drawn up side by side rank and file this word includes corporals as well as privates all below sergeants see file to ransack to pillage but to ransack the hold is merely to overhaul its contents ransom money paid for the liberty of a war prisoner a city or for the restoration of a captured vessel formerly much practised at sea it then fell into disuse but was revived for a time in the seventeenth century at length the greater maritime powers prohibited the offering or accepting such ransoms by english law all such securities shall be absolutely void and he who enters into any such contract shall forfeit five hundred pounds on conviction a privateer taking ransom forfeits her letters of mark and her commander is punishable with a heavy penalty and imprisonment raper an old term for a rope-maker wrap full applies to a ship on a wind when keeping her wrap full means do not come too close to the wind or lift a wrinkle of the sail rapid a slope down which water runs with more than ordinary rapidity but not enough to be called a fall and sometimes navigable by boats rapparee a smuggler or one who lives on forced hospitality raise an archaism for a channel of the sea and not a mispronunciation of race which see razi a line of battleship with her upper works taken off or reduced a deck to lighten her some of the old contract built ships of the line yclept forty thieves were thus converted into heavy frigates as the duncan america war sprite etc rash a disease which attacks trees that have ceased to grow raising marking timber by the raising knife which has a peculiar blade hooked at its point as well as a centre pin to describe circles raising iron a tool for clearing the pitch and oakum out of the seams previous to their being caulked afresh rat a term for one who changes his party for interest from rats deserting vessels about to sink these mischievous vermin are said to have increased after the economical expulsion of cats from our dockyards thus in the petition from the ships in ordinary to be allowed to go to sea even to carry passengers we read quote, though it was hemigrants or soldiers anything afore them rats which now they is our only lodgers for well they knows the artful dodgers the board won't stand the expense of cats End quote. injury done by rats is not included in a policy of insurance also a rapid stream or race derived from sharp rocks beneath which injure the cable ratcher an old term for a rock ratchet a saw-toothed wheel in machinery as the winch windlass etc in which the pole catches rate a tariff or customs roll also the six orders into which the ships of war were divided in the navy according to their force and magnitude 
thus the first rate comprehended all ships of a hundred and ten guns and upwards having forty-two pounders on the lower deck diminishing to six pounders on the quarter deck and forecastle they were manned with eight hundred and fifty to eight hundred and seventy-five men including officers seamen marines servants etc second rate ships carrying from ninety to a hundred guns third rate ships from eighty to eighty four guns fourth rate ships from sixty to seventy four guns these were comprehended under the general names of frigates and never appeared in the line of battle fifth rate mounting from thirty two to forty or even sixty guns and sixth rate mounting from any number or no guns if commanded by captains those commanded by commanders were deemed sloops since the late introduction of massive iron a captain may command but one gun to rate a chronometer to determine its daily gaining or losing rate on mean time rated ship synonymous with post ship in former times the term ship alone now infers that it is a captain's command whilst sloop means a commander's raft a gaelic term in use for raft a timber raft it is also an ancient earthen fort rating the station a person holds in the ship's books ration each man's daily allowance of provisions including in the army fuel and forage to man and horse rational horizon see horizon ratlines or rattlings small lines which traverse the shrouds of a ship at distances of fifteen or sixteen inches horizontally from the deck upwards and are made firm by jamming clove hitches they form a series of steps like the rounds of a ladder rat's tail the tapering end of a rope also the round tapered file for enlarging holes in metal rattan malay rotan one of the genus calamus used for wicker work seats of chairs etc in the eastern seas they constitute the chief cables even to forty-two inches circumference infinitely stronger than hemp light and not easily chafed by rocks very useful also to seamen for brooms hoops hanks for sails etc to rattle down rigging or to rattle the shrouds to fix the ratlines in a line parallel to the vessels set on the water ron an old manx term for a seal in the north it implies the row of salmon used as a bait rowner a northern term for the female salmon as having the ron or row rave hook in ship carpentry a hooked iron tool used when enlarging the butts for receiving a sufficient quantity of oakum Ravelin, in fortification and outwork consisting of two long faces meeting in a salient angle covering the curtain and generally the shoulders of the bastions it affords a powerful defence to the ground in front of the latter which may rarely be approached till after the fall of the ravelin ravine a deep chasm through which the rains are carried off elevated lands ray a line of sight also a flat rhomboidal fish with a rough skin genus raya to raise to level or demolish applicable to works or buildings raised fortifications are said to be raised when totally demolished razorback the fin whale balenoptera so called from its prominent dorsal fin it usually attains the length of seventy feet razor bill a sea fowl allied to the ox alca torta End of section 11, read by Sandra, near Montreal, 2023. Section 12 of the Sailor's Word Book, N to R, by W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A digest of sea terms and phrases. R. E. Reach or ratch. A straight part of a navigable river, the distance between any two elbows on the banks, wherein the current flows in uninterrupted course. Reaching. Sometimes used for standing off and on. A vessel is also said to be on a reach when she is sailing by the wind upon any tack. A vessel also reaches ahead of her adversary ready about or ready o the order to prepare for tacking each man to his station see about ready with the lead a caution when the vessel is luffed up to deaden her away followed by heave 
Real, a silver coin of Spain, value five pence, sterling, one-eighth of a dollar. Realilo, a small Spanish silver coin, value half a real. To ream or ream out. To enlarge the bore of a cannon with a special tool, so that it may take a larger projectile. Reaming. Fishing vessels shifting their quarters while fishing. This word is often used for reaming, which see. Rear. An epithet for anything situated behind another, as the hindmost portion of a fleet or army. See division. To rear an object in view is to rise or approach it. Rear Admiral. The officer in command of the third division of a fleet, whose flag is at the mizzen. Rear Guard. That part of the army which brings up and protects the rear. Rearing. The upper works tumbling home, or being wall-sided. Rear Rank. The last rank of a body of men drawn up in simple line. Rear Ship. The sternmost ship of a fleet. To reassemble. To gather together a fleet or convoy after having been scattered. Reesty. Rancid or rusty pork or butter, etc. To revel or raffle. To entangle. To knot confusedly together. Reballing. The catching of eels with earthworms attached to a ball of lead suspended by a string from a pole. Rebate. See discount. Rebates. The grooves formed on each side of the keel, stem, or stern post to receive the planks. See rabbit. Rebels. Revolters and mutineers. In admiralty law the same as enemies. Receivers of Drawats of admiralty. Now termed receivers of wreck. Which see. Receivers of wreck. Persons specially charged with wrecked property for the benefit of the shipping interests. Receiving ship. At any port to receive supernumerary seamen, or entered or impressed men for the Royal Navy. Reciprocate. The alternate motion balancing a steam engine. Reciprocity. The enlarging or contracting particular admiralty statutes to meet the usages of foreign powers. Ship's reckoning. The ship's position resulting from the courses steered and distances run by log brought up from the last astronomical observations, if unaccompanied by corrections for longitude, by chronometer, and for latitude, it is termed only the dead reckoning. Recoil, the running in of a gun when discharged, when backward motion is caused by the force of the fire. Reconnaissance, a word adopted from the French as meaning a military or nautical examination of a place. Reconnoitering, Sailing within gunshot of an enemy's port to ascertain his strength and capabilities for offense and defense. Also, a rapid examination of coasts and countries for correcting the defects of many previous maps and charts. Recreant. This term was for him who had yielded in single combat. Recta prisa regis. In law, the sovereign's right to prizage or one pipe of wine before and another behind the masts, as customary in every cargo of wine. Rectifier, an instrument used for determining the variation of the compass, in order to rectify the ship's course, etc. It consists of two circles, either laid upon or let into one another, and so fastened together in their centres that they represent two compasses, the one fixed, the other movable. Each is divided into thirty-two points of the compass and three hundred and sixty degrees, and numbered both ways from the north and the south, ending at the east and west in ninety degrees. The fixed compass represents the horizon, in which the north and all the other points are liable to variation. Redan, the simplest form of regular fortification, consisting of two faces meeting in a salient angle, generally applied in connection with other works. Red, the spawn of fish. Also the burrow scooped out by salmon in which to deposit their ova. Redfish, a northern general term for fishes in the spawning state, but particularly applied to salmon. Redemptioner, one who purchases his release from obligation to the master of a ship by his services, or one whose services are sold to pay the expenses of his passage to America or elsewhere. Redhibition, an action 
to annul or set aside a contract of sale. Red-hot balls. Shot made red-hot in a furnace, and in that state discharged at the enemy. The loading is managed with wet wads. Readout. An enclosed work, differing from a fort in that its parts do not flank one another. Red pine. Pinus rubra. The red spruce, the timber of which is preferred throughout the United States for yards, and imported for that purpose into Liverpool from Nova Scotia. To reduce to degrade to a lower rank, or to shorten the allowance of water or provisions, to reduce a charge, to diminish the contents of a cartridge, sometimes requisite during heavy firing, to reduce a place, to compel its commander to surrender or vacate it by capitulation, reduction of celestial observations, the process of calculation by which observations are rendered subservient to utility, reef, a certain portion of a sail, comprehended between the head of a sail and any of the reef bands. The intention of each reef is to reduce the sail in proportion to the increase of the wind. There are also reefs parallel to the foot or bottom of large sails extended upon booms. Close reefed is when all the reefs of the top sails are taken in. Reef is also a group or continuous chain of rocks, sufficiently near the surface of the water to occasion its breaking over them. See fringing reefs and barrier reefs. Reef band, a narrow band of canvas sewed onto the reef line to support the strain of the reef points, it is pierced with eyelet holes through which the points are passed each way with a running eye. Reef cringles, see cringle. Reef earrings, see earrings. Reefed topmast. When a topmast is sprung in or near the cap, the lower piece is cut off and a new fit hole cut by which the mast is reefed or shortened. Reefers. A familiar term for midshipmen because they have to attend in the tops during the operation of taking in reefs. Reef knot is one in which the ends fall always in a line with the outer parts. In fact, two loops easy to untie, never jamming. That with the second tie across is termed a granny's knot. Reef line. Casual aids in bad weather to help the men at the earrings. When the vessel was going free and the sail could not be spilled, the men were, if blowing hard, often aided by passing the studding sail halyards loosely round the sail, clued up spirally from yard arm to bunt. Reef pendant. A rope going through a cringle in the after leech of a boom mainsail and through a check a sheave hole in the boom, with a tackle attached to its end to bows the after leech down to the boom by which the sail is held reefed. On the lower yards it is a pendant for a similar purpose as the reef tackle. Reef points. Small flat pieces of plated cordage or soft rope tapering from the middle towards each end, whose length is nearly double the circumference of the yard and used for the purpose of tying up the sail in the act of reefing. They are made fast by their eyes on each side of the eyelet holes. Reef tackles are indeed pendants and tackles. The pendant is rove through the sister block, then a sheave in the yard arm, and secured to a strong cringle beneath the close reef, sometimes through a block, and the end secured to the yard arm. Within the sister block it becomes a gun tackle purchase, with the fall leading on deck. The reef tackles are hauled out and the other aids complete before the men are sent aloft. Reef tackle span. Two cringles in the boat rope, about a couple of feet apart when a block is used. Reels. Well-known wheels moving round an axis and serving to wind various lines upon as the log reel for the log line, deep sea reel which contains the deep sea line amounting to a hundred and fifty or two hundred fathoms, spun yarn reel, etc. She went ten knots off the reel, that is, by the log line. Reaming, a term used by caulkers for opening the seams of the plank with reaming irons, that the oakum may be more readily admitted. This may be a corruption of rhymer for opening circular holes in metal. Reaming beetle, a caulker's largest mallet. Reaming iron, the larger iron used by caulkers in opening the seams. Re-entering angle. In fortification is an angle whose vertex points inward or towards the place. To reeve. To pass the end of a rope through any cavity or aperture as the channel of a block. 
to unreave is the opposite. Reaving, in polar voyaging, following up serpentine channels in the ice till the vessel reaches open water or reaves the pack. Refitting, repairing any damages which a ship may have sustained. Reflecting circle, an instrument used instead of a sextant, quintant, or quadrant, but the quintant embraces as much, videlicet, 152 degrees. The instrument reflects a celestial or any distant object so as to bring the image into contact with any object seen direct by which their angular distance is measured, as in lunar distances. Angle of reflection. Whether the instance be a ray of light or a cannonball, the angle of reflection will always be found equal to the angle of incidence. Reflux. The ebbing of the tide or reflow of the waters, which have been pressed back. Reformates, the sons of the nobility and gentry who served in the navy under letters from Charles II and were allowed table money and other encouragements to raise the character of the service. Refracting telescope, that through which objects are seen directly through its double object glass. Refraction, an inflection of the rays of light, that property of the atmosphere which bends the rays of light in their passage to the eye from a different density and causes the altitude of heavenly bodies to appear greater than it really is, especially near the horizon. See terrestrial refraction. Refusal of a pile. Its stoppage or obstruction when it cannot be driven further in. Regal fishes. In statute law, these are whales and sturgeons. Regarders. Inspectors of the felling of timber. Regatta. A rowing match, formerly peculiar to the Republic of Venice, but now the term is applied to yacht and boat races in general. Regiment, a body of men commanded by a colonel, complete in its own organization and divided into companies of infantry or troops of cavalry. Regimental orders, such as the commanding officer may deem it necessary to issue for the discipline of the regiment. Regimentals, the regulation dress for the individuals of a regiment. Regimental staff officers the surgeon, adjutant, paymaster, assistant surgeon, and quartermaster of each regiment. Region, any large tract of land or water on the earth's surface, having some feature common to every part of itself and different from what exists elsewhere, as northern, southern, or intertropical region, mountainous region, region of perpetual congelation, etc. Register. A purchaser has no title to a ship, either at law or in equity, unless he be mentioned in the register. If a vessel, not duly registered, exercise any of the privileges of a British ship, she is liable to forfeiture. Register anew. When any registered ship is so altered as not to correspond with the particulars relating to the description in her register book, either a new certificate of registry or an official endorsement of the old one is necessary. Register of Vice-Admiralty Court, not responsible for money transmitted under proper precautions and in the usual course of business, but afterwards lost by the failure of the consignee. Register ship, a Spanish plate ship or galleon. Registry of seamen, a record of merchant seamen kept by the Registrar-General of seamen. Regni Populi, an old law term given to the people of Surrey and Sussex, and on the sea coasts of Hampshire. Regulator, a name for the governor of a steam engine, also a valve cock. The regulator of a clock is the shortening or lengthening pendulum or escapement. Regulus, Alpha Leonis, the principal star in the old constellation Leo. Raining winds, the prevalent winds on any particular coast or region, see wind. Rain, a crack or vein in a musket barrel. To reinforce, to strengthen a fleet, squadron, army, or detachment by additional means and munitions. Reinforce, in artillery, that increase beyond its general conical outline of the metal towards the breech, which was marked on old pattern guns by rings. They are generally in cast guns omitted now, though the principle of the reinforcement remains, yet less defined in nature and number in the recent wrought and built-up guns. Reinsurance. 
to insure the same property a second time by other underwriters. If an underwriter find that he has incautiously bound himself to a greater amount than he can discharge, he may shift it or part of it from himself to others by a reinsurance policy made on the same risk. Race, small coins of Portugal, of which 4,800 go to the Moidor. Relief, the change of watches, also the person relieving a particular station, also a fresh detachment of troops ordered to replace those already on duty. In fortification, the total height of the crest of the parapet above the bottom of the ditch. To relieve, to put fresh men or ships upon a stipulated duty. Relieving tackles, those which are occasionally hooked to the tiller in order to steer by in bad weather or in action when any accident has happened to the wheel or tiller rope. Rema or rim, the tide. Remain the quantity of stores left on charge for survey after a voyage. Remark book. This contains hydrographical observations of every port visited and is sent annually to the Admiralty, together with any charts, plans, or views which have been taken. Often a very dull miscellany, though kept by intelligent masters. Remberge. A long, narrow rowing vessel of war formerly used by the English, its name is derived from Remo and Barca. It seems to have been the precursor of the deal luggers. Romblay, the mass of earth requisite for the construction of the rampart, an embankment. Ramora, the suckerfish. It has a long oval plate on the top of the head by which, having exhausted the air in it, it clings to a ship's bottom, to the sides of a shark or to a turtle. Removal from the list. Dismission or dropping an officer out of the service. Rendering, the act of yielding to any force applied. For instance, the rope of a lanyard or tackle is said to render when, by pulling upon one part, each other part takes its share of the strain. Any rope, hawser, or cable is rendered by easing it round the bits, particularly in riding with the strain to freshen the nip. Rendezvous the port or place of destination where the several ships of a fleet are appointed to join company. Repeating firearm, one by which a number of charges previously inserted may be fired off in rapid succession or after various pauses. The principle is very old, but the effect of working of it is new. To repeat signals is to make the same signal exhibited by the admiral in order to its being more readily distinguished at a distance or through smoke, etc., Frigates and small vessels out of the line were deemed repeating ships and enforced signals by guns. The repeat from a superior intended to convey rebuke for inattention is usually accompanied by one gun or several. To replenish, to obtain supplies of water and provisions up to the original amount. Report of guard. The document rendered in by the guard boat of every vessel boarded during her hours of duty with their arrivals, sailings, and other occurrences. Report of survey. The opinion of surveys officially signed by surveying officers. To report oneself. When an officer returns on board from duty or from leave of absence. Representation. A collateral statement of such facts not inserted on the policy of insurance as may give the underwriters a just estimate of the risk of the adventure. See warranty. Reprimand, a formal reproof for error or misconduct, conveyed sometimes publicly, sometimes confidentially, sometimes by sentence of court-martial or on the judgment, mature or otherwise, of a superior. Reprisal, the taking one thing in satisfaction for another, as the seizing of ships and goods for injury inflicted, a right exerted, though no actual war be commenced. It is authorized by the law of nations if justice has been solemnly called for and denied. The word is synonymous with mark in our admiralty courts. Reprise or reprisal is the retaking a vessel from the enemy before she's arrived in any neutral or hostile port. If a vessel thus retaken has been twenty-four hours in the possession of an enemy, she's deemed a lawful recapture. But if within that time she's merely detenue and must be wholly restored to the owner, an amount of salvage is sometimes awarded to the recaptors.
Also, if a vessel has from any cause been abandoned by the enemy before he's taken her into any port, she is to be restored to the original proprietor. See salvage. Requisition. An official demand for stores, etc. Rescue. Any vessel, recovered by the insurrection of prisoners on board of her, or by her being forced by stress of weather into our ports, she's restored on salvage. There is no rule prescribed by the law of England in the case of foreign property rescued. With British subjects, the court usually adopts the proportion of recapture. In respect to foreigners, the only guide is that of quantum meruit. Reserve. A portion drawn out from the main body and stationed in the rear for a special object. Reship. To ship again, or ship goods that have been imported or conveyed by water. Resident. A British subject residing in an enemy's country may trade generally with the natives, but not in contraband. Resisting medium. An assumed thin ethereal fluid which, from the retardation of Anca's comet, may be supposed to pervade the planetary space, perhaps the spiritus subtilissimus of Newton, in virtue of which periodical comets seem to have their velocity diminished and their orbits contracted at every revolution. To resolve. To reduce a traverse or day's work to its exact limits. Resource. Expedient. A good seaman is ever a man of resources. Respondentia. A loan made upon goods laden in a ship, for which the borrower was personally responsible, differing therein from bottomry, where the ship and tackle are liable. In bottomry the lender runs no risk, though the goods should be lost, and upon respondentia the lender must be paid his principal and interest, though the ship perish, provided the goods be safe. Responsibility. Often a wholesome restraint, but the bugbear of an inefficient officer. Rest. A pole with an iron fork at the top for the support of the old heavy musket. To ret. To soak in water, as in seasoning timber, hemp, etc. Retinue. Applied strictly to the admiral's suite or followers, though it means an accompanying train in general. Retire. The old war term for retreat. Thus, Shakespeare makes Richard Plantagenet exclaim, quote, Ne'er may he live to see a sunshine day that cries, Retire, if Warwick bid him stay. Retired list, a role whereon deserving officers are placed whose health, age, or want of interest justifies their retirement from active service. Retired pay, a graduated pension for retired officers, but the term is nearly synonymous with half pay. Retractus aquae, an old law term for the ebb or return of tide. Retreat, the order in which a fleet or squadron declines engagement, or the retrograde movement of any body of men who retire from a hostile force, also that beat of drum about sunset which orders the guards and piquettes to take up their night duties. Retrenchment, a defence with a ditch and breastwork behind another post or defence, whereby the besieger, on forcing the original work, is confronted by a fresh one. Retrogradation, an apparent motion of the planets contrary to the order of the signs and to their orbital march. The arc of retrogradation is the angular distance thus apparently traversed. Mars may be watched as an instance. Retrograde motion, see motion. Return. A ship on a return voyage is not generally liable, but if she sailed on the outward voyage under false papers, the liability to confiscation continues. To return a salute. Admirals are saluted, but return two guns less for each rank that the saluting officer is below the admiral. Returns. All the various reports and statements required by officers in command to be made periodically. See supplies and returns. Reveille. The beat of a drum at break of day when night duties cease. Revenue. In cases of revenue proceedings, the law harshly provides that the honus probandi is to be on the claimant, however injured. Revenue cutters. Sharp-built, single-masted vessels armed for the purpose of preventing smuggling and enforcing the custom house regulations. They are usually styled revenue cruisers. Reverse. A change. A vicissitude. 
also the flank at the other extremity from the pivot of a division is termed the reverse flank revetment a sloping wall of brickwork or any other attainable material supporting the outer face of the rampart and lining the side of the ditch review the inspection of a fleet or army or of any body of men under arms time of revolution in relation to a planet or comet this is the time occupied in completing a circuit around the sun and is synonymous with periodic time end of section twelve Read by Sandra near Montreal, 2023. Section 13 of The Sailor's Word Book, N to R, by Admiral W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases r h to r i re a very old word signifying an overflow of water ryland rod a dutch measure of twelve english feet formerly in use with us it is more properly rhineland rod rhodian laws a maritime code asserted but without sufficient proof to be the basis of the roman sea laws the code published by leon clavius and others as a body of rhodian laws is a mere forgery of modern times rodings the brass cleats on which the axles of the pumps work rhomboid an oblique parallelogram having its opposite sides equal and parallel but its angles not right angles rhombus a lozenge shaped figure having four equal sides but its angles not right angles rum or romb a vertical circle of any given place or the intersection of a part of such a circle with the horizon rums therefore coincide with points of the world or of the horizon and hence seamen distinguish the rums by the same names as the points and winds as marked on the fly or card of the compass the rum line therefore is a line prolonged from any point of the compass in a nautical chart except the four cardinal points or it is a line which a ship, keeping in the same collateral point or rum, describes throughout its whole course. Radal, from the Celtic, riddle, a ford or channel joining lakes or broad waters. Ribadokin, a powerful crossbow for throwing long darts, an old piece of ordnance throwing a ball of one or two pounds. Ribbons, in naval architecture long narrow flexible pieces of fur nailed upon the outside of the ribs from the stem to the stern post of a ship so as to encompass the body lengthways and hold the timbers together while in frame ribbing nails similar to deck nails but not so fine they have large round heads with rings so as to prevent their heads from splitting the timbers or being drawn through ribbons the painted mouldings along a ship's side, also the tatters of a sail in blowing away. Ribs, the frame timbers which rise from the bottom to the top of a ship's hull, the hull being as the body, the keel as the backbone, and the planking as the skin. Ribs and trucks, used figuratively for fragments. Ribs of apparel, an old species of apparel, having alternate ribs and bull's-eyes. The ribs were pieces of wood, each about one foot in length, having two holes in them through which the two parts of the parrel rope are reeved, with a bull's-eye between. The inner smooth edge of the rib rests against and slides readily up and down the mast. Rickers, lengths of stout poles cut up for the purpose of stowing flax, hemp, and the like. Spars supplied for boats' masts and yards, boat-hook staves, etc. Ricochet, the bound of a shot. Ricochet fire that whereby a less charge and a greater elevation being used the shot or shell is made to just clear a parapet and bound along the interior of a work riddle a sort of weir in rivers to riddle to fire through and through a vessel and reduce her to a sieve-like condition to ride to ride at anchor a vessel rides easily a peak athwart head to wind out a gale open hawse to the tide to the wind etc 
a rope rides as when round the capstan or windlass the strain part overlies and jams the preceding turn to ride between wind and tide set of a ship at anchor when she's acted upon by wind and tide from different directions and takes up a position which is the result of both forces Rido, a rising ground running along a plain nearly parallel to the works of a place and therefore prejudicial riders timbers laid as required reaching from the kilson to the orlop beams to bind a ship and give additional strength they are variously termed as lower futtock riders and middle futtock riders when a vessel is weak or has broken her floors or timbers riders are introduced to secure the ship and enable her to reach a port where she can be properly repaired stringers are also used but these run horizontally riders are also upper tiers of casks or any stowed above the ground tier in the hold riding a port last with lower yards on the gunnels riding bits those to which the cable is made fast riding down the act of the men who throw their weight on the head of a sail to stretch it also of the man who comes down a stay etc to tar it or foots the bunt in ridge hydrographically means a long narrow stretch of shingle or rocks near the surface of the sea sea reef and shallows geographically the intersection of two opposite slopes or a range of hills or the highest line of mountains ridge ropes are of various kinds thus the centre rope of an awning and those along the rigging to which it is stretched the man ropes to the bowsprit safety lines from gun to gun in bad weather all obtain this name rife an old provincial term for a salt-water pond rifled ordnance that which is provided with spiral grooves in the interior of the bore to give rotatory motion to the projectile thereby much increasing its accuracy of flight and permitting the use of elongated shot and shell rifle pit cover hastily thrown up by one or two skirmishers but contributing when a line of them is joined together to form works sometimes of much importance rig colloquially mischievous frolic not carried to excess to rig to fit the shrouds stays braces and running rigging to their respective masts yards and sails colloquially it means to dress to rig in a boom is to draw it in to rig out a boom is to run it out from a yard in order to extend the foot of a sail upon it as with studding sail booms etc Rigel, beta orionis one of the bright stars in orion rigged completely equipped riggers men employed on board ships to fit the standing and running rigging or to dismantle them the riggers in the naval yards who rig ships previous to their being commissioned are under the master attendant and perform all anchor mooring and harbour duties also rigging a general name given to all the ropes or chains employed to support the masts and arrange the sails according to the direction of the wind those are termed standing which are comparative fixtures and support the masts etc and those running which are in constant use to trim the yards and make or shorten the sail etc rigging loft a long room or gallery in a dockyard where rigging is fitted by stretching serving splicing seizing etc to be in readiness for the ship rigging mats those which are seized upon a vessel's standing rigging to prevent its being chafed rigging out a term for outfitting also a word used familiarly to express clothing of ship or tar rigging stopper see stopper of the cable right as to direction fully or directly thus right ahead or right away etc right angle an angle formed by a line rising or falling perpendicularly upon another and measuring ninety degrees or the quadrant of a circle right angle triangle that which has one right angle right ascension an arc of the equator between the first point of aries and the hour circle which passes through any planet or star or that point of the equinoctial which comes to the meridian with any heavenly object and is therefore similar to terrestrial longitude right athwart square or at right angles with the keel right away 
it is a habit of seamen answering when a sail is discovered from the masthead right away on the beam sir or on the bow etc right hand rope that which is laid up and twisted with the sun that is to the right hand the term is opposed to water laid rope which is left handed writing the act of a ship recovering her upright position after she's been laid upon a careen which is effected by casting loose the careening tackles and if necessary heaving upon the relieving tackles a ship is also said to write at sea when she rises with her masts erect after having been listed over on one side by grounding or force of wind right the helm the order to put it amidships that is in line with the keel right on end in a continuous line as the mast should be right sailing running a course on one of the four cardinal points so as to alter only a ship's latitude or longitude right up and down said in a dead calm when the wind is no way at all or in anchor work when the cable is in that condition the boatswain calls up and down sir whereupon thick and dry nippers for weighing are ordered right way when the ship's head casts in the desired direction also when she swings clear at single anchor right whale a name applied to the whale with a very large head and no dorsal fin which yields the whalebone and train oil of commerce in opposition to the fin backs or rockwells which are scarcely worth catching there are several species found both in the arctic and southern seas but never within the tropics rig of a ship the disposition of the masts cut of sails etc whether square or fore and aft rigs in fact the rig denotes the character of the vessel to rig the capstan to fix the bars in the drumhead in readiness for heaving not forgetting to pin and swift see capstan rig the gratings prepare them for punishment rile an old corruption of rail to ruffle the temper to vex rill a very small run of fresh water less than a rivulet rim or brim a name given to the circular edge of a top see top rim base the shoulder on the stock of a musket rime or frost condensed vapour rhymer a palisade in fortification but for its naval application see reaming also a tool for enlarging holes in metal plates etc rims those pieces which form the quarter galleries between the stools also the cast iron frame in which the dropping poles of a capstan traverse and bring up the capstan ring a commercial measure of staves or wood prepared for casks and containing four shocks also the iron ring to which the cable is bent to the anchor in the summit of the shank ring bolt an iron bolt with an eye at one end wherein is fitted a circular ring they are more particularly used for managing cannon and are for this purpose fixed on each side of the portholes they are driven through the plank and the corresponding timber and retained in this position by a clinching ring ring dogs iron implements for hauling timber along made by connecting two common dogs by a ring through the eyes when united with cordage they form a sling dog which see ring ropes ropes rove through the ring of the anchor to haul the cable through it in order to bend or make it fast in bad weather they are first rove through the ring and then through the hawse holes when the end of the cable is secured to them rings the annual circular layers in timber also grommets or circles of metal for lifting things by hand or securing the points of bolts etc as hatch or port rings ring stopper a long piece of rope secured to an after ring bolt and the loop embracing the cable through the next and others in succession nip the cable home to each ring bolt in succession it is a precaution in veering cable in bad weather ring tail a kind of studding sail hoisted beyond the after edge of those sails which are extended by a gaff and a boom over the stern the two lower corners of this sail are stretched to a boom called a ring tail boom which rigs in and out upon the main or driver boom rink a space of ice devoted to certain recreations as a skating or a curling rink generally roofed in from the snow in canada rionach a name of the horse mackerel among the scottish islands rip a pannier or basket used for carrying fish 
to rip, to strip off a ship's planks. Riparia, a law term for the water running between the banks of a river. Ripari, inhabiting the seashore. Ripe, from the Latin ripa, the banks of a tide river and the seashore, a term in use on our southern coasts. Rippers, or ripiers, men from the seashores who sell fish to the island towns and villages. Ripping iron, a caulker's tool for tearing oakum out of a seam, or stripping copper or sheathing from a ship's bottom. See reaming. Ripple, the small waves raised on the surface of the water by the passage of a slight breeze or current, caused by foul bottom. Ripple marks, the ripply appearance left at low water on the flat part of a sandy beach. Rips. See tide rip. Also strange overfalls, the waves of which, even in calm weather, will throw their crests over the bulwarks. Risperm. Fascines placed to oppose the violence of the surf. Rising floors. The floor timbers, which rise gradually from the plane of the midship floor, so as to sharpen the form of a vessel towards the bow and stern. Risings of boats. A narrow strake of board fastened with inside to support the thwarts. Rising square. In ship carpentry, a square used in the whole moulding, upon which is marked the height of the rising line above the keel. To risk a run. To take chance without convoy. Risks. The casualties against which insurances are made on ships and cargoes. Ritoch. An Orkney name for the turn. Sterna Hirondo. Rivage, an old term from the French for a coast or shore of the sea or a river. Rivagium, a law term for a duty paid to the sovereign on some rivers for the passage of boats or vessels. An Anglo-Norman term for a harbour. Reeve, the seashore, also as a verb to split wood. River boats, wherries and the like, which ply in harbours and rivers for the conveyance of passengers. River Harbour, that which is situated in the channel of a river, especially such as are at the embouchure with a bar in front. River Lakes, large pools of water occupying a portion of the valleys or hollows through which the courses of rivers lie. River Risk, a policy of insurance from the docks to the sea at any port. Rivet, the row of a fish, also a hinge pin or any piece of riveted work the soft iron pin by which the ends of a cask hoop or the plates of a boiler, etc., are secured by clinching. Riviera, an Italian term for a coast, as the Riviera di Genoa. Rix dollar, a silver coin common in northern Europe of the average value of four shillings sixpence. End of section 13, read by Sandra. Section 14. The Sailor's Word Book. N to R. By Admiral W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A digest of sea terms and phrases. R. O. Roach. The hollow curvature of the lower parts of upper square sails to clear the stays when the yards are braced up. Road or roadstead. An offshore, well-known anchorage, where ships may wait orders, as St. Helens at Portsmouth, Cowes, Leith, Basque Roads, Sogor, and others, where a well-found vessel may ride out a gale. Roadster, or roader, applied chiefly to those vessels which work by tides, and seek some known road to wait turn of tide or change of wind. If a vessel under sail strike against any roader and damage her, the former is obliged by law to make good the damages. Roast beef dress, full uniform, probably from its resemblance to that of the royal beef-eaters. Roast beef of old England, a popular air by which officers are summoned to the dinner-table. Robins, or robins, see rope bands. Robinet, an ancient military machine for throwing darts and stones, now the name of some useful cocks in the steam-engine, as for gauge, brine, trial and steam regulator. Rock, an extensive geological term, but limited in hydrographical parlance to hard and solid masses of the earth's surface, 
When these rise in insulated masses nearly to the surface of the sea, they render navigation especially dangerous. Half-tide rock, a rock which appears above water at half-ebb. Rock cod, a species of cod found on a rocky bottom. Rocket, the well-known pyrotechnical preparation, but modified to suit various purposes. A cylindrical case charged with a fiercely burning composition, the gases of which, rushing out from the after end against the resisting atmosphere, propel the whole forward at a rate continually increasing until the composition be expended. It is generally kept in balance by a long light stick or tail attached. The case is made of metal or paper and variously headed to the amount of thirty-two pounds, if its purpose be war. See Congreve Rocket. Life-saving by conveying a line over a stranded vessel even the killing of whales when reduced to one, two, or three pounds, or lastly, signals for which it is fired straight upwards. Rocket Boat Flat-bottomed boats fitted with rocket frames to fire Congreve rockets from in naval bombardment. Rocket Brigade A body of horse artillery assigned to rocket service. Rocket Frame The stand from which Congreve rockets are fired. Rock hind, a large fish of tropical regions, Serranus catus. Rock scorpion, a name applied to persons born at Gibraltar. Rod, the connecting and coupling bars of the steam engine, sea sounding rod. Rod, a sort of crossbow formerly in use in our navy. Roddenfluke, a northern name for the turbot. Rodding time, the season for fish spawning. Road of all. Improperly so written for road of all, which see, the order to throw in and boat the oars. Roger's anchor. The excellent, small-palmed, very strong and good-holding anchor. It is the result of many years' study and experiment by Lieutenant Rogers, R.N. Rodman gun. One cast on the excellent method of Captain Rodman, formerly of the United States Ordnance, videlicet on a corps artificially kept cool, whereby the outer metal, cooling last, shrinks onto and compresses the inner, instead of drawing outwards and weakening it, as it must do when cooled first in a solid casting. Roger. The black flag hoisted by pirates. See Jolly Roger. Roger's blast. A provincialism, denoting a sudden and local motion of the air, resembling a miniature whirlwind. Rogue's march. The tune appropriated to drumming a bad character out of a ship or out of a regiment. Rogue's yarn. A yarn twisted the contrary way to the rest of a rope, for detecting theft or embezzlement. Being tarred if in a white rope, but white in a tarred rope, it is easily discovered. It is placed in the middle of each strand in all the cordage made for the Royal Navy. Lately the rogue's yarn has been superseded by a thread of worsted, a different coloured worsted being used in each dockyard, so that any defective rope may be traced to the place where it was made. Rôle d'équipage, an important document in Admiralty Law. See Muster Rôle. Rôle, a uniform beat of the drum without variation for a considerable time. The divisions are summoned by roll of drum, one roll for each. See Muster Rôle. Roller. A mighty oceanic swell said to precurse the northers of the Atlantic and felt in great violence at Tristan da Cunha, where HMS Lily foundered with all hands in consequence, and several vessels at St. Helena have been driven from their anchors and wrecked. These waves roll in from the north and do not break till they reach soundings, when they evince terrific power, rising from five to fifteen feet above the usual level of the waters. A connection with volcanoes has been suggested as a cause. Rollers. Cylindrical pieces of timber, fixed either horizontally or vertically in different parts of a ship above the deck, so as to revolve on an axis and prevent the cables, hawsers, and running rigging from being chafed by lessening their friction. The same as friction roller. Also, movable pieces of wood of the same figure, which are occasionally placed under boats, pieces of heavy timber, etc. Rolling, that oscillatory motion by which the waves rock a ship from side to side. The larger part of this disturbance is owing to the depth of the center of gravity below the center of figure. 
the former exercising a violent reaction when disturbed from its rest by passing seas. Therefore, it is diminished by raising the weights and must by no means be confounded with healing, rolling chalk or jumpies. Similar to that of a gaff fastened to the middle of an upper yard to steady it. Rolling cleat, synonymous with rolling chalk. Rolling down to St. Helena, running with a flowing sheet by the trade wind. Rolling hitch, pass the end of a rope round a spar or rope, take it round a second time, riding the standing part, then carry it across and up through the bight. Rolling swell, that heaving of the sea where the waves are very distant, forming deep troughs between. Rolling tackles, used to prevent the yards from swaying to and fro under heavy rolling motion. Rolster or roster, a rotation list of officers. To roll up a sail, to hand it quickly. Roman cement, a cement which hardens under water, used for piers, docks, etc., as pozzolana, abersaw limestone, etc. Romboline, or rumboline, condemned canvas, rope, and the like, also the coarse rope used to secure new coils. Rondel, an old term for a light round shield. Roan, a northern term for the row of a fish. Ronal, a northern term for a female fish, as kipper is for the male. Ruble, a Russian coin. See ruble. Rude goose, a name for the Brent goose. Roof tree. See rough tree. Rook or rook, a mist, dampness, or fog. Room, a name given to some reserved apartment in a ship as the bread room. In the aftermost part of the hold, properly lined to receive the bread and keep it dry, the cook room, sea galley, the gun room, on the after gun deck of ships of the line or steerage of frigates, devoted to the gun room officers, light room, attached to the magazine, sail rooms, devoted to the sails are on the orlop deck and are enclosed for the reception of the spare sails, slop room, devoted to slop clothing, spirit room, a secure space in the after part of a ship's hold for the stores of wine, brandy, etc. Steward's room, the office devoted to the purser's steward of former times, now paymaster's steward, whence he issues most of the light provisions to the ship's company. Ward room, a room over the gun room in ships of the line, where the lieutenants and other principal officers sleep and mess. The term sea room is applied when a ship obtains a good offing, is clear of the coast dangers, and is free to stand on a long course without nearing danger. Room, rumor, or going room. The old term for going large, or from the wind. See Lask and large. It is mentioned by Bourne in 1578. Rooming, an old word to signify running to leeward. To go room, to bear down. Roost a phrase applied to races of strong and furious tides which set in between the Orkney and Shetland Islands, as those of Sumberg and the Start. Rope is composed of hemp, hide, wire, or other stuff, spun into yarns and strands which, twisted together, forms the desired cordage. The word is very old, being the actual representative of the Anglo-Saxon, rep. To rope a sail, to sew the bolt rope around its edges, to strengthen it and prevent it from rending. Rope bands, small plaited lines rove through the eyelet holes with a running eye, by which the head of a sail, after the earrings are secured, is brought to the yard or jack stay. Rope house, a long building in a dockyard where ropes are made. Rope ladder, such as hangs over the stern, to enable men to go into the boats, etc., Rope maker, a first-class petty officer in the navy. Rope of sand, a term borrowed from a Greek proverb signifying attempting impossibilities without cohesion, said of people who ought but will not combine to effect a necessary object. Ropes, a general name given to all the cordage above one inch in circumference used in rigging a ship, but the name is severally applied to the awning, bell, boat, bolt, breast, bucket, boy, davit, entering, grapnel, guest or gist, guy, heel, keel, man, parrel, passing, ring, rudder, 
slip, swab, tiller, top, and yard, all which see under their respective heads. Ropes are of several descriptions, videlicet. Cable laid consists of three strands of already formed hawser laid or twisted left hand, laid up into one opposite, making nine strands. Hawser laid is merely three strands of simple yarns, twisted right, but laid up left. Four strand is similarly laid with four strands, and a core, scarcely twisted. Sash line is plated and used for signal halyards. Rope yarn is understood to be the selected serviceable yarns from condemned rope, and is worked into twice laid. The refuse again into rumbo line, for temporary purposes not demanding strength. High ropes. On the high ropes, to be ceremonious, upstart, invested with brief authority. Ropes end. The termination of a fall, and should be pointed or whipped, formerly much used for illegal punishment. Rope yarn. The smallest and simplest part of any rope, being one of the large threads of hemp or other stuff, several of which being twisted together form a strand. Roping needles those used for roping being strong accordingly. Rorqua, or furrowed whale, a name of Scandinavian origin, applied to the finback whales, distinguished from the right whales by the small size of their heads, shortness of their whalebone, the presence of a dorsal fin, and of a series of conspicuous longitudinal folds or furrows in the skin of the throat and chest. Rose, or strainer, a plate of copper or lead perforated with small holes, placed on the heel of a pump to prevent choking substances from being sucked in. Roses are also nailed for the like purpose upon the holes which are made on a steamer's bottom for the admission of water to the boilers and condensers. Rose lashing. This lashing is middled and passed opposite ways. When finished, the ends appear as if coiled round the crossings. Rosina. A Tuscan gold coin. Value, 17 shillings, 1 pence sterling. Ross, a term from the Celtic, signifying a promontory. Roster, or rolster, a list for routine on any particular duty. See rolster. Rostral crown, the naval crown anciently awarded to the individual who first boarded an enemy's ship. Rostrum, a prow, also a stand for a public speaker. Rotation the motion of a body about its axis. Rother, this lineal descendant of the Anglo-Saxon rotor, is still in use for rudder, which see. Rotten row, a line of old ships in ordinary, in routine order. Ruble, see ruble. Rough books, those in which the warrant officers make their immediate entries of expenditure. Rough knots, or rough knots unsophisticated seamen. Rough music, rolling shot about on the lower deck, and other discordant noises when seamen are discontented, but without being mutinous. Rough spars, cut timber before being worked into masts, etc. Rough tree, an unfinished spar, also a name given in merchant ships to any mast or other spar above the ship's side. It is, however, with more propriety applied to any mast, etc which, remaining rough and unfinished, is placed in that situation. Rough tree timber, upright pieces of timber placed at intervals along the side of a vessel to support the rough tree. They are also called stanchions. Round, to bear round up, to go before the wind, to round a point is to steer clear of and go around it. Round aft, the outward curve or segment of a circle that the stern partakes of from the wing transom upwards. Round and grape, a phrase used when a gun is charged at close quarters with round shot, grape and canister, termed a bellyful. Round dozen, a punishment term for thirteen lashes. Round house, a name given in East India men and other large merchant ships to square cabins built on the after part of the quarter deck and having the poop for its roof. Such an apartment is frequently called the coach in ships of war. Round, because one can walk round it. In some trading vessels, the roundhouse is built on the deck, generally abaft the main mast. To round in. To haul in on a fall, 
the act of pulling upon any slack rope which passes through one or more blocks in a direction nearly horizontal and is particularly applied to the braces as round in the weather braces it is apparently derived from the circular motion of the rope about the sheave or pulley through which it passes rounding a service wrapped round a spar or hawser also old ropes wound firmly and closely about the layers of that part of a cable which lies in the hawse or athwart the stem etc it is used to prevent the cable from being chafed see keckling and service rounding up is to haul through the slack of a tackle which hangs in a perpendicular direction without sustaining or hoisting any weighty body roundly quickly round ribbed a vessel of burden with very little run and a flattish bottom the ribs sometimes almost joining the keel horizontally round robin from the french ruban rond a mode of signing names in a circular form after a complaint or remonstrance so that no one can tell who signed first rounds several discharges of the guns cartridges are usually reckoned by rounds including all the artillery to be used as fifty rounds of ammunition also going round to inspect sentinels the general visiting of the decks made by officers to see that all is going on right also the steps of a ladder round seam the edges are salvages sewed together without lapping round seizing this is made by a series of turns with the end passed through the riders and made fast snugly in applying this the rope does not cross but both parts are brought close together and the seizing crossed round shot the cast iron balls fitting the bores of their respective guns as distinguished from grape shot or other shot rounds of the galley the opposite of what is termed coventry for it is figurative of a man incurring the expressed scorn of his shipmates round splice one which hardly shows itself from the neatness of the rope and the skill of the splicer properly a long splice round stern the segmental stern the bottom and whales of which are wrought quite aft and unite in the stern post it is now used in our navy thus securing an after battery for the ship it had long obtained in the danish marine round the fleet a diabolical punishment by which a man lashed to a frame on a long boat was towed alongside of every ship in a fleet to receive a certain number of lashes by sentence of court-martial to round two to bring to or haul to the wind by means of the helm to go round is to tack or wear round top a name which has obtained for modern tops from the shape of the ancient ones see top round turn in the hawse a term implying the situation of the two cables of a ship which when moored has swung the wrong way three times successively if after this she come round till her head is directed the same way as at first this makes a round turn and elbow a round turn is also the passing of a rope completely round a timber head or any proper thing in order to hold on see holding on also to pass a rope over a belaying pin also the bending of any timber or plank upwards but especially the beams which support the deck and curve upwards towards the middle of the deck this is for the purpose of strength and for the convenience of the run of water to the scuppers to round up a fall or tackle is to gather in the slack the reverse of overhaul round up of the transoms that segment of a circle to which they are sided or of beams to which they are moulded roundure an old english word for circle to rouse to manhandle rouse in the cable haul it in and make it taut rouse and bit the order to turn out of the hammocks roust a word used in the north of scotland to signify a tumultuous current or tide occasioned by the meeting of rapid waters see roost rout the confusion and disorder created in any body of men when defeated and dispersed Root the order for the movement of a body of men specifying its various stages and dates of march routine unchanging adherence to official system which if carried too far in matters of service often bars celerity spirit and consequently success rove a rope when passed through a block or sheave hole rovens a corruption of rope bands which see also the ravelings of canvas or bunton rover 
a pirate or freebooter, see pirate, also a kind of piratical galley of the Barbary states. Roving commission, an authority granted by the Admiralty to a select officer in command of a vessel to cruise wherever he may see fit, from the Anglo-Saxon ruin, to row, to propel a boat or vessel by oars or sweeps, which are managed in a direction nearly horizontal, see oar. Row dry, the order for those who row not to splash water into the boat. Road of all, the orders for the rowers to cease and toss their oars into the boat simultaneously in naval style. To row in the same boat, to be of similar principles. Roll, the iron or wooden shiver or wheel for a whip tackle. Roll, a light crane formerly much used in clearing boats and holds. Row locks those spaces in the gunnel or upper edge of a boat's side, wherein the oars work in the act of rowing. Row ports, certain scuttles or square holes, formerly cut through the sides of the smaller vessels of war, near the surface of the water, for the purpose of rowing them along in a calm or light wind, by heavy sweeps, each worked by several men. See sweeps. Royal, the name of a light sail spread immediately next above the top gallant sail, to whose yard arms the lower corners of it are attached. It used to be termed top gallant royal and is never used but in fine weather. Also the name of a small mortar. Royal fish. Whales, porpoises, sturgeons, etc., which when driven on shore become dwarfs of admiralty. Royal marine artillery. Originally selected from the royal marines, now specially enlisted. See Artillery, Royal Marine. Royal Marines, see Marines. Royal Merchant, a title of the Mediterranean traders of the 13th century, when the Venetians were masters of the sea. Royal Mortar, a brass one of five and a half inches diameter of bore and 150 pounds weight, throwing a 24-pounder shell up to 600 yards, most convenient for advanced trenches and boat work. Royal Naval Reserve, see Naval Reserve. Royals, a familiar appellation for the Marines since the mutiny of 1797, when they were so distinguished for the loyalty and steadiness they displayed, also called Royal Jollies, see Jolly. Royal Standard, see Standard. Royal Yacht, a vessel built and equipped expressly for the use of the Sovereign. Royal Yacht Club, a very useful and honourable association, see Yacht Club. Royal Yard, the fourth yard from the deck on which the royal is set. Roins, an archaic term for streams, currents, or other usual passages of rivers and running waters. End of section 14. Read by Sandra, near Montreal, 2023. Section 15 of the Sailor's Word Book N to R by Admiral W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A digest of sea terms and phrases. R U to R Y. Rubber. A small instrument used to rub or flatten down the seams of a sail in sail making. Rubble work, a mass of masonry formed of irregular stones and pebbles embedded in mortar. It is used in the interior of docks, piers, and other erections, and is opposed to ashlar work. Ruble, a Russian silver coin of one hundred kopecks, in value about three shillings two pence sterling, so called from rubli, a notch, derived from the time when bars of silver marked with notches at different distances to represent different values, were used in Russia instead of coin, portions of the bar being cut off as required. Rudder, the appendage attached by pintles and braces to the stern post of a vessel, by which its course through the water is governed. It is formed of several pieces of timber, of which the main one is generally of oak, extending the whole length. Tiffis is said to have been its inventor, the Anglo-Saxon name was Steor Roper. Rubber bands or braces, the iron or composition hinges on which a rudder turns. Rudder case, the same as rudder trunk, which see. Rudder chains, 
strong copper chains connected with the aft side of the rudder by a span clamp and shackles. They are about six feet in length. A hempen pendant is then spliced into the outer link, and allowing for slack to permit the rudder free motion, they are stopped to eye bolts along the stern moulding, terminating on the fore side of the stools of the quarter galleries. They are, when the rudder or tiller is damaged, worked by tackles hooked to the after chain bolts, but their principal use in later times is to save the rudder if unshipped by striking on a reef or shoal. Rudder chowder, the same as gudgeon, which see, and chowder. Rudder chocks, see chalk. Rudder coat, a canvas coat affixed to the rudder encasing the opening in the counter to prevent the sea from rushing in through the tiller hole. Rudder gudgeon, those secured to a ship are termed braces. Gudgeon is more applicable to boats or small vessels. Rudder head, the upper end of the rudder stock. Also, the flat surface of the trunk, which in cabins and wardrooms forms a very convenient table. Rudder horn, a kind of iron crutch bolted to the back of the rudder for attaching the rudder chains to in case of necessity. Rudder house, synonymous with wheelhouse. Rudder irons, the pintles, gudgeons, and braces of the rudder are frequently so called, though they were usually of copper. Rudder pendants. See rudder chains. Hempen pendants fastened to the rudder chains for steering in cases of accident and towing the rudder to prevent its being lost if it gets unshipped. Rudder pintles. The hooks attached to the rudder which enter the braces and hang it. Rudder rake. The aftermost part of the rudder. Rudder stock. The main piece of a rudder. Rudder tackles. Attached to the rudder pendants. Rudder trunk. A casing of wood fitted or boxed firmly into a cavity in the vessel's counter, called the helm port, through which the rudder stock is introduced. Ruffle. A low, vibrating sound of the drum, continuous like the roll, but not so loud. It is used in complimenting officers of rank. Rufflers. Certain fellows who begged about formerly, under pretext of having served in the wars. Rule of thumb. That rule suggested by a practical rather than a scientific knowledge. In common matters it means to estimate by guess, not by weight or measure. Rules of the sea. Certain practices and regulations as to steerage, which are recognized by seamen as well as by law, in order to prevent the collision of ships, or to determine who has contravened them. Precedence in one sense, custom in another. Rule staff. A lath about four inches in breadth, used for curves in shipbuilding. Rumbelow, a very favourite burden to an old sea song, of which vestiges still remain. Rumbo, rope stolen from a royal dockyard. Rumgagger, a cheat who tells wonderful stories of his sufferings at sea to obtain money. Rummage, the search by custom house officers for smuggled goods. Run. The distance sailed by a ship, also used among sailors to imply the agreement to work a single passage from one place to another, as from Jamaica to England and so forth. To make a run, to sway with alacrity. Clean run, when the after part of a ship's form exhibits a long, clean curvature approaching to a wedge. Full run, when it is otherwise. Run of the ice. In Arctic parlance implies that the ice is suddenly impelled by a rushing motion, arising from currents at a distance. To lower by the run, to let go altogether, instead of lowering with a turn on a cleat or bit head. To run athwart a ship's course, to cross her path, run away with her anchor, set of a ship when she drags or shoulders her anchor, drifting away owing to the anchor not holding, for want, perhaps, of sufficient range of cable. Run away with it. The order to men on a tackle fall, when light goods are being hoisted in, or in hoisting topsails, jib, or studding sails. Rundle, that part of a capstan round which the messenger is wound, including the drumhead, see whelps. To run down a coast. To sail along it, keeping parallel to or skirting its dangers. To run down a vessel. 
to pass over into or foul her by running against her end on so as to jeopardize her. Rune from the Teutonic Rennen to flow, a water course. Rungs, the same as the floor or ground timbers and whose ends are the rung heads. Also a spoke and the step or round of a ladder. Runlet, a measure of wine, oil, etc., containing eighteen gallons and a half. Run money, the money paid for apprehending a deserter and charged against his wages. Also the sum given to seamen for bringing a ship home from the West Indies or other places in time of war. Coasters are sometimes paid by the run instead of by the month. Runner purchase. The addition of a tackle to a single rope, then termed a pendant, passing through a block applied to the object to be moved, as it might be the lanyard of a shroud, the end of the runner pendant being fast to some secure fixed object, as in back stays, etc. Runners, ships which risk every impediment as to privateers or blockade, to get a profitable market. Runners of foreign goods, organized smugglers. Running agreement, in the case of foreign-going ships making voyages averaging less than six months in duration, running agreements can legally be made with the crew to extend over two or more voyages. Running blocks, those which are made fast to the running rigging or tackles. Running bowline knot, it is made by taking the end round the standing part and making a bowline upon its own part. Running bowsprit. One which is used in revenue cutters and smacks. It can be reefed by sliding in and has fit holes for that purpose. See sloop. Running down claws. A special admission into policies of marine insurance to include the risk of loss or damage in consequence of the collision of the ship insured with other vessels. Running down the port. A method practiced in the ruder state of navigation when the longitude was very doubtful, by sailing into its parallel of latitude and then working for it on its parallel. Running foul, a vessel by accident or bad steerage, falling in contact with another under sail. See athwart hawes. The law and custom of the sea requires that the ship on the port tack shall bear up and give way to that on the starboard tack. Foreigners observe this general custom. Steamers, however, are always bound to give way to vessels under canvas, having the power to alter course without altering sails or endangering the vessel. Running goods. Landing a cargo of contraband articles. Running out and running in the lower deck guns. The old practice of morning and evening evolutions in a line of battle ship, wind and weather permitting. Running part of a tackle synonymous with the fall, or that part on which the manpower is applied to produce the intended effect. Running the gantlet. See gantlope, pronounced gantlet. To run out a warp. To carry a hawser out from the ship by a boat and fasten it to some distant place to remove the ship towards that place or to keep her steady whilst her anchors are lifted, etc. Rupee, the well-known coin of the East Indies, there are gold rupees of nearly thirty shillings in value, but the current rupee is of silver, varying a little from two shillings, according to its being named Bombay, Arcot, or Sica. Ruspone, a gold Tuscan toy of the value of one pound, eight shillings, seven pence sterling. Rut of the sea, the point of impact where it dashes against anything. Rut of the shore. The sea breaking along the coast. Rutter, or routier, the old word for an outline chart for ships' tracks, from root. It was also applied to a journal or log book, or to a set of sailing instructions as a directory. Ride, a small stream. Rhine, an Anglo Saxon word still in use for a watercourse or streamlet which rises high with floods. End of section 15 and end of The Sailor's Word Book End to R by Admiral W. H. Smythe Read by Sandra, near Montreal, 2023